brand. Nah, you don't want red, you don't want red lipstick. You want no, yeah. You want Merlot. Oh, like no. like you know, like I spilled some wine like on this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want some red like this. Look at this. This looks like a racing seat actually. Yeah, dude, that's going to be their new interior. Oh, see, there's two different colored reds right there. Yeah. There's like the, I'd say blood red and then like bright red. And then we got the GI. You want that red? The maroon. Talking about car interiors, the interior of your car. Welcome to <laughs> today's episode of the Spick and Span Show. We're really tight right here in here. Aren't we? Are we tight? No, I think it's better. This is good, right? You want? Yeah. All right. We're friendly. We don't have a third guest live in studio, but we do have a guest joining us, um, uh, as well as everybody out there in TV and YouTube land. Burgundy, baby. Let's go burgundy. There it is. That's a good color. Long shirt. Um, Shout out to everybody out there. Can you guys hear us? How do we look? How do we sound? There's lots of questions that we have all the time. We got a new door on the studio. Things are upgrading. Oh, yeah, it oh, opens wow. and closes. Is that like a whole new door? It's a whole new door. Whole new world oh, up wow. there. Yeah. What'd yeah. you buy that at? Um, well, I just the property manager put it in. Oh, nice. But okay. I complained. I just I complained enough. Squeaky wheel. Yeah. The squeaky wheel gets the squeaky door. Gets the squeaky Outta door here. out of here. <laughs> um, I had to kick that thing down the other day after it rained. The yeah. whole place flooded. We got new 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 um, weather stripping over there. Nice. I mean, not garage, the studio. Mm. The, stu- the studio yeah, 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 garage. Yeah. Uh, anyway, welcome everybody to a lovely Tuesday. Um, we are actually one week away from a potential layout drop. Well, one week and one day. We're trying to get it moved to Tuesdays at 4.30-ish. Uh, they left me on red. The NXL left me on red. Came quick. Yeah, yeah, dude. Sorry. We were just talking about it. I feel like I'm still, still got like dusty boogers from... Vegas. I still got like dust in my sinuses from Vegas. It also, you know, could have been the the frosty event. I give Spick and Span a shirt and doesn't wear. Oh, I think that's Spick a, uh, a shirt. Look, Little we G. gave the um, Baton Rouge oh. Mighty Dolphins some props, dude. And now those guys yeah, take, are take really a lot here, yeah, right? dude. Give give the like, Dolphins, give the Mighty Dolphins an inch. They're taking a mile. Yeah, straight yeah. up. Straight up, if you guys have, did they win the event? If you guys won the event, I, I didn't. First so. of all, I no. didn't get a shirt. We gave you guys uh, story time on story I saw time. The most. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and shout out to Timothy props. Bangs. I saw Timothy Bangs out there. Mm-hmm. Best name in paintball, right? Yeah, that yeah. guy. Uh, yeah, I actually got to put a put a face to the name. He's got the whole name on the back, big bold letters. Um, I actually saw another name too that I thought. Was yeah, cool. dude, it's really it's great to it. see our fan base out there. We need to get we need to get some shirts. We need to get some we need to get some stuff out there. We gotta get some we gotta get some stuff in the in the deal here. Oh, I saw halfway decent. Halfway decent. Yeah. I don't know how we felt about that one. That team name. I've seen halfway decent. Well, before. this was actually was funny. It, halfway decent. They had a five. They won. They lost a game one to five, and they also won a game four to one. So mm-hmm. it makes sense. Halfway decent. Halfway decent, halfway decent <laughs> man. <laughs> Very fitting. Very mm. fitting. Um, ah, two and two missed Sunday by one. Freaking point. All halfway right. Halfway well, decent. When you guys, yeah, it's halfway decent. When you guys get to Sunday and get on our level, we'll, talk, we'll talk. We'll talk. Wearing the the shirt we'll talk. Shirt might make we'll talk, Yeah, we might. We yeah. will talk it. And maybe the maybe the mannequin could wear it. You never yeah. know. But right yeah. now we're we're donning the fresh uh, tiger wear straps. My favorite thing about these. Can I pull this out of the yeah. Yeah. Dude, this is my favorite part about it. So I don't know if you guys saw Todd ripping, repping, rocking. But um, you guys had some really cool stuff. Yeah, I hope you make a you. lot more of those. Uh, uh, what was it called? Tequila Mayamo. Oh yeah, the Mayamo the, tequila the, headbands. The day of the Tequila, <laughs> te- tequila de los Muertos. <laughs> those headbands were fresh. This is my favorite part. Easy yeah, Tiger. Yeah, yeah. Right. So this could be like a, it's like a statement, right? Yeah. Like whoa, Easy Tiger. Yeah. Or it's like Easy Tiger. Yeah. Yeah. I need to make. <laughs> I wanted to make some shirts like it too. But this was one of them that we made. These are probably go up on the site later this week. Mm-hmm. Trop- that's that's tra- tropical tiger. Yeah, tiger wear yeah. in the tropics. Um, so yeah, check out the tiger wear website. You, do you guys have any of those cool little headbands? Of, oh, like, up I'll yet? put those up. No, yeah. I haven't. Like they're all one offs, right? I've been, I've been catching yeah. up on sleep the last two days. We were just talking about it. So we just uh, we just finished up the WC PPL. Congrats to Regime winning Premier. Pull up all the winners. You want to pull, yeah. grab, up, grab yeah. the winners? And we're going to have the WCPPL and the USXBL president, CEO, and uh, man, man in, charge. in charge, Mike Hinman, coming out here. We're talking snake beams, blind layouts, and 
yeah, all sorts of all sorts of great questions. And this layout actually is the uh, I'm glad because you know every about like Sunday we start kicking around some ideas for what we're going to talk about. Monday we're like creating the banner and like kind of a catchy catchy little phrase catchphrase to get you guys wanting to watch learn faster is is today's um but uh if you you know if you check out what uh, what we have here on the youtube banner it's actually very fitting as well for what happened this weekend on the layout i'll, I'll put it up here um how to make mistakes and learn quick mm -hmm. <laughs> with kyle and ryan yeah this this and we're going to talk to mike hammond about it also but this layout over the weekend was like absolutely perfect um, for understanding how to learn quickly. And if you played last weekend, you might be one of those 95% of, of the players that were out there who didn't learn very quick and kind of like kept, you'd be like the rat, you know, that's chasing the cheese that gets, keeps getting shocked. And you're like, ah, oh, man, I really like this cheese though. Yeah. Like, and we're going to get into what we're talking about, but yeah, you were in that, if you were in that snake can, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Trying to play whack-a-mole. Um, but, uh, but before we get into all that, before we get into all the meat and the potatoes and the beans and the rice of the episode, we want to give a big shout out to all of our show supporters. Steven Smith, back in it. And yes, Steve, to answer your question, you're at 26 months. Um, he had uh, his, his membership lapsed a little bit and he had to re-enter some details. And he's like, hey, am I going to lose my, my, uh, my membership like the time that I've been supporting? I was like, uh, I don't yeah. think so, but I just checked it right now. 26 months. And, and holding. So uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for the support. Little G from the Bean. Shout out to the discounted merch perk. Also, if you guys are part of that membership program, I just shared the New Balance link today. Uh, also, we're going to be sharing a couple of other cool little ideas. Maybe we'll get... Uh, maybe you know what we'll do? I don't know if it's up to you, actually. By we. I'm not, not, I'm not a Tiger Wear pot guy. But maybe when you... Right before you launch the stuff on the website, send it up to the... Oh yeah, the members. Yeah. Let the members have a little pick because I know there's yeah. a bunch of one-offs and we can do that. I, and your headbands are really cool yeah. this time. Like this, I mean your headbands are cool anyway. Yeah. But you had some really one -on -one unique ones. ones. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I like that. It's kind of testing the market to see. Yeah, I got um someone actually from Malaysia sent me a picture of one of them that someone took and was like, "Can you send this to me?" Mm -hmm. so, got that. Yeah. Yeah. All the way all the way out to Malaysia. All the way out to Malaysia. So shipping international. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, big thanks to everybody who supports the show. Uh, we were actually just talking about it right now. I know we sound like a broken record, but uh, do we sound all right? I know I asked this all right because we uh, Sloan sometimes comes in here and, and dials the knobs to the hard left, hard right, yeah. um, deletes addresses and names out of the out of the spreadsheets that I have. But uh, thank you, Doc. But we're there's like five settings on this little thing. That you can like turn and i know sometimes it's for having the two-way conversation sometimes it's having the sideways and when you read the instructions there's nothing for the best damn live youtube show setting on there so i'm gonna just make sure that we sound good yeah, yeah. i'm gonna make sure we sound good <laughs> and um yeah if you guys want to join the show go ahead uh, there is a join click like share um there's you could subscribe to the channel but you can also join to support the channel we throw you guys names up on the wheel actually i gotta get I gotta get both y'all up on the wheel, little G from the beam. I don't, yeah, how did did it show up on your end? Oh What's yeah, that? Because it didn't show. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's on it. We got him. Do you see Verbal's picture of the eclipse? That was pretty cool. Dude, that was sick. With the with the that was next level. The like with the corona fire on the C, outside. C coronal C M R C R M E coronal mass ejection C M E. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Danny Danny Lincoln just sent some about it too. Um, yeah, that was, that was badass. Congrats to the Bloodhawks. They look like a completely different team this year. Dude. Yes. Came out strong. Got rid of Brandon Short. Cut the loose ends <laughs> and everything that's holding you back from success. Mm -hmm. Brandon Short, <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> um, so yeah, congrats to those guys. I would watch them. I mean, they beat you twice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a Usually you get that, that second match because mm -hmm. the other team. Yeah, because it does. It usually does. Um, and I want to say congrats to uh, Narcos, man. I got a ton of compliments uh, from people that watch them. And they're like, damn, dude. Um, uh, Grayson Gladstone mentioned it. Uh, Cody mentioned it. Mouse was Mouse was talking. Like, Mouse doesn't really give a lot of those compliments out, like, yeah. you know, a lot. And uh, our kid Santos 
who played the snake, he like absolutely showed up. Yeah. You know, he was, uh, I got, I had Ben Sloffer come in to play on the team and I was kind of planning on having Ben be the number one over there, you know? Uh, and so I was going to work Santos in and Ben was like, Ben got tired. And he's like, hey, I need a point off. And I'm like, all right, cool. Santos, you're in as the number one. Santos went in there and shot like three or four guys. And I'm like, I'm tight. Spin him again. All right, spin him again. Uh, and then uh, Kyle Kyle Breath, Heat one. Um, he played really well. I mean, so everybody moved up last year or from D3 to this division. Yeah. Kyle Breath went from D4 to Premier. Yeah. And he handled it. How Wait, did... he plays at Nargos? He does now. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. I, sna- I snaked I him. That. I snaked him, dude. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he had a, he had a great uh, event, first event in Premier. The guys took seventh. We lost. We lost by two points. It could have very well. We lost this two on two to tie it up against Regime, but mm. we ended up losing to Regime by two points. Mm. Um, but definitely, definitely excellent start for the Narks. Um, I thought Bloodhawks were going to take it too. So Regime yeah. played a good game. Yeah, Regime Regime played smart. Smart. Like they didn't. They they did that little three man offense over on that side. Yeah. Um. And we beat Collision in the prelims, mm. and they ended up they ended up coming back and doing pretty well to get fourth place. Yeah. And then congrats to Rainey and the Sicarios. He almost swept D three and D four. Almost. Sacramento Pink. Interesting name choice. Yeah. But they they handled business in D four. Silly bananas, another. Silly bananas, bananas. bananas, there they are. Those kids play with bananas in their pockets. Do they really? I swear to God, one of the kids came up and was like, "Hey, we're silly bananas," and pulled a banana out of his pocket. Was like, "Here, I want this. Don't you have this?" I'm How like, was it smush? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like you, like walked off the field. Maybe that's I was like, like that was weird. They're trying to see if it's smushed, like if they can play the whole match without it getting smushed. Like remember, remember when you were in like what, what is that like ROP something class and you had to build ROTC, a rocket. ROTC. You had to, you know, ROTC I think is an army, but like yeah. it's the one where you like in Home science Mac, class. Home Mac is what it was called. You have to shoot. School. You had to shoot the bottle up and yeah. then and then make sure the egg doesn't break. Yeah. If you can't play a full point with a without smashing a banana in your pocket, a full match. Yeah. Right. That means you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. So you, if so, every time you go to the field, I bet we could do something. That's what we should have done for April Fools. Put a note in my calendar. April Fool's 2025. I got y'all. <laughs> I got y'all. Um, but uh, but yeah, congratulations to all those teams. I had Omega uh, also jumping up from D4 to D3. Made Sunday. Got our butts kicked pretty badly on on Sunday morning, but uh, but or Saturday morning rather on the D3 line. But definitely new team or revamped team moving up a division. I'm really proud of those guys. Uh, and we're gonna talk about why. They didn't do well, perform well, and I, and why, I don't know, we had a hundred and something teams probably at this event, it seemed like, the parking yeah. lot was so full, but a why a hundred and something of you all didn't do well, I yeah. guarantee, I'm almost positive it's probably run, right around the same reason, um, and then, yeah, we're going to get Mike Hinman on as well, but, uh, but also, big shout out to our sponsors of the show, we've got uh, Gen X and Arfon, uh, you guys have been supporting us, they've been supporting us for a long time. And uh, and always very eager to make sure we have prizes for everybody. So we got some pod caddies, water bottles. Those are going out. Nectar pucks are going in each one of the shipments that are going out as well. Uh, they do have all the deals that are going on. If you guys are going to the NXL Texas, make sure you guys load up on pods. These Every little thing counts when you guys are playing. So you don't want to have to fumble around with like dirty pods or 15 different types of pods that you're trying to put in everybody's packs. And... Some have tape on them. Some have stickers on them. You're, you're fussing to get them out. Just get the right pods for the game. Dynasty uses them pretty much every... I don't think there's any pro team that doesn't use Gen X pods, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think um, so. So, best pods in the game, hands down, without a question. Uh, support them also because they support the show and paintball in general. And they're just good people. And on top of that, they're also making the pods biodegradable. They're integrating that into the system. So, uh, they care about the environment. So, ditch your old pods, I guess, into a landfill. <laughs> <laughs> and then get the ones that don't biodegrade after you break down after a while. Yeah, next, we'll next, have to think about that. <laughs> next decade. Yeah. We'll do the right. Um, and then uh, <laughs> Dustin over at GG Sports, you know, uh, he jumped on here as a show supporter. Uh, obviously, you got to be in the demographic to play out there. But uh, but they're having event two is going to be moved to June 1st and 2nd. We were trying to come out there. We're going to probably do something with the Spick and Span show, another live show out there. We're trying to do it this year. But, uh, but he runs an awesome park. We've talked about it. You can go to facebook.com slash GG Sports Park, and they're actually opening an indoor turfed field, um, but they're going to be putting other sports in there. So you can bring 
mm. like a crossover, right? So you're going to have uh, indoor soccer, baseball, softball, birthday parties. They're going to have the gel blasters, and they're also going to have reball set up in there. Oh, nice. So you can kind of like get the crossover sports over there and then mm. hopefully host tournaments and do all that stuff. So one of the big things that we like is, you know, the crossover stuff. Anybody who's supporting paintball, growing paintball, trying to get it out to the masses. And then on top of that, they have a pretty, pretty rad set up. Like yeah. probably one of the best, freshest new spots in the game. Um, so yeah, big shout out to them. And then, uh, and then, you know, Paul and Matrix Gear. Paul is a, uh, Paul's a great dude, dude man. Paul's the best. <laughs> he's so good, dude. Did you see that video? Of mouse? It's yeah. His spike. He's hilarious. He's great for paintball. Uh, he's a great guy. Matrix Gear has been uh, supporting the show since day one. So check them out, support them, obviously support all the sponsors who support us and, and support paintball. Okay. That's big. And if you got a brick and mortar store, store even better. Go in there in person, bullshit with them, hang out, read the magazines when Great American Paintball comes out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, make sure you get a sub subscription to that. I'm excited well. for it. Yeah, it's going to be cool, man. I think it's it's happening soon. It's yeah. happening very soon. Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. We we'll have to try to get Alex We got to get later. get Alex Alex there. Oh, look at these guys. All we got a lot of we got a lot of dolphins in the, yeah. in the house, dude. <laughs> the dolphins are in here. Let's go. Stop trying to play on. Just stop playing. They're just this is their viral marketing. They're good. Good yeah, job, Gorilla yeah. Marketing. Great work. Great work. Yeah. Um, yeah, verbal. Exactly, dude. Back in the day, dude. I I was a paintball. I was a paintball grom. Like I was in the store chatting, looking through the bargain bin. That was my favorite thing about old paintball stores. Um, is the bargain bin? Did you guys have one of those at your store? Did anybody have a bargain bin? It was just like oh, like yeah. random line like odd pieces of macro line would be in there and you're like oh cool this is only a buck like old just old trash and shit you'd be like yes you know one man's trash another person's <laughs> yeah thirty dollar shirts hundred twenty dollar jerseys hundred twenty dollar jerseys oh they've got the ties on them oh yeah 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 okay okay I see ya penalties um. And, uh, and yeah, man, this is, uh, this is gonna be a fun show. I'm actually really, we, we tried to get him on early. We can give him a call right now, yeah. actually. Um, but it's actually kind of better that we got him on now. Let me, let me get the retinal scan here. Yeah. Uh, it was actually really, I'm, I'm glad that we're getting him on now rather than last week because we can talk about both events. Um, we can get all, we can get all that stuff sorted out and, and handled and, uh, and really check it out. Oh, Hey, look at this too, huh? Thank you, Mr. Clint Riddle. Dude, this is dope. Little portrait of Alex Fragey mm -hmm. up in the future. Here he is. This is what he, <laughs> when they uncover him out of his uh, out of the grave, when they dig his grave up. <laughs> when they dig his grave up to rob him for that Hormesis headband. <laughs> in a hundred years, this is what they're gonna see. <laughs> Here lies Alex Fragey. Buried with his Proflex. Skin and bones. And his Hormesis headband. <laughs> right here. So we're going to jump over to the Nectar Projector. Brought to you by the boys from Nectar. Uh, we had him on last week. If you guys didn't get a chance to watch that episode, I think that episode was actually really good, man. Um, they, did, uh, they did a really cool job, and it was really neat to see guys, like, pull themselves up from their bootstraps. Yeah. And uh, get on. What up, him, man? Hey boys! Hey, there he is. You've been uh, you've been catching up on rest like us. <laughs> really, I've been uh, out working. Oh man, dude, you got to take some time off, man. I'm hanging out with you, cool guys. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, thank you for 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 jumping in with us, dude. I, fi I finally got invited to the show. Oh, we Everybody invited out you. There, I finally made it. You finally made it. <laughs> you find I like that. You got the T-shirt with both logos on it. Smart man. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you got SC Village Tiger Wear? I do have my Tiger Wear shirt. My boy Kyle came through for me. There we yeah, go. Did yeah. you get a? Did Not you... my boy Mouse. My boy <laughs> Kyle. Did you get? Did you get his? Uh, did you get a jumpsuit? I mean, let's be real. I don't have moods like Todd, so I'm pretty sure I'm not getting the most viral thing on the internet right now. I'm probably not getting one of those jumpsuits. Yeah, I swear, Todd put I... that thing on and it gave him energy. <laughs> I can definitely be Todd's hype man, though. <laughs> Dude, he uh, it did. It changed him into a new person. You know, it's like when, when you dress up on Halloween and you become that character. Mm -hmm. Todd became that character. 
right? I think we all know that Todd can become that character at any given moment yeah. in life. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see him, like you know, like when he does that. Oh, it's, yeah. it's hilarious. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he was having a blast. And the second he does it, we all think to ourselves, "Well, we've seen Todd go Todd before, yeah. and here he goes <laughs> here in a whole new direction." Yep. Yeah, here he goes. And you see people out there like, I didn't know Todd had moves like that. And you're like, well, yeah, clearly, yeah. You, don't, clearly can, you don't know Todd then. Dude, he can dunk a, a basketball. He can? Uh, he, well, he, I mean, now, I mean, we're in our 40s now. But yeah, like, he, he could. <laughs> Back in the day. Drop it down another six inches. I'm sure he'll get up there and put it down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, he back in the day, he could dunk. Wow. Yeah, he's got, he's got it, dude. He's got He's the full package. He really is. Absolutely. He really is. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, I really liked how you had the uh, the pit tents in, like for those NXL size ones. That was a huge upgrade. Wait, they're not normally pit tents? No, they were the ones that Mike had at the tournament. Those, that that was new, right? Yeah. This year they were those massive ones. Last year ones? we had the ten by ten, the old oh. TST style with the half red, half blue, so we could make like red pits, blue pits. Mm-hmm. But this year we upgraded to the twenty by twenty. I don't know what you call those things. Circus tents, yeah. wedding tents. Uh, definitely circus tent. No, it was good too. Even on uh, tent. on Friday when it was raining, it was nice too because like I feel like everyone tries to like smash into the pits mm-hmm. even when you're not ready to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like that gave space even on the outside, so you had room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that was cool. It was kind of funny. The West Coast guys aren't used to that big of tents because they would still all be crammed into one 20 by 20. Yeah. With the other 20 by 20 just being full of random family members and people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, for sure. Cool. We got this big 20 by 20. I don't know what that one's Yeah, I don't know what that's for. Yeah. yeah. It's technically yeah. yours too. Yeah. yeah. I know we're supposed to play, but I don't know who's over there just hanging out on our, that, that side. I guess we'll just share it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's there's my scorekeepers are like, you know, there's like kids playing around in those tents, and I'm like, yeah, they have wristbands on. I don't know how they got those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Sloan made an appearance out there. Yep, yep. I, dude, she had so much fun, and she Sloan was found every puddle to go jump in because when Ryan dude, was walking out, she was covered. She was covered. And I'm like, I hope you have an extra set of clothes to change her into. Dude, it. she was nesting on, like she went to the back of the field where all the wet paintballs were, and she was just sitting down there, squishing them in her hands. <laughs> no, just <laughs> sitting. There. And she, she even got me. She came up and she's like, Dad, I love you, and she gave me a hug, and I feel something go. And pop on my back, and she was just squeezing the paintballs on my back, dude. She was the, ass- go- the golf ball size paintballs, dude. Yeah. She was filthy, dude. She was, and she was covered all over her face. Oh man, but she had a, she had so much fun, and she was she was pissed because I, I I I printed out a little layout for her, and she was like trying to tell people like what what to do on the field, <laughs> and then she was so bummed. I mean, I, I forgot I didn't even use you as a scapegoat, but I'm gonna blame you um, to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. That's the first time Ryan ever blamed me for something. We used to have an alliance, but go ahead. So, race, tra- race trade away. So she, uh, she's, she was pissed because all my games were at 7 a.m. You got me at 7 a.m. every day. So I had to wake yeah. up at 4, thir- 4 o'clock to leave at 4.30 to be there by 6. Uh, you're welcome. You're, thank you. And, uh, and so she would be sleeping, and then when she woke up, she's like, where's Dad? And, and Camille was like, she's at the paintball field, and she was pissed because she thought she was the assistant coach. Uh, uh, and then on Sunday, finally, when I got home, when I, when, I, when I was like dragged my lifeless body back into the house, and she's like, you didn't take me. I go, honey, you were sleeping, and you were snoring, and I was shaking you. Oh, this was a, a complete fabrication. And, uh, and she's like, oh, okay. I was like, you looked so... And, you, and, and she goes, oh, okay. Thank you for letting me sleep. I was like... Pfft. <laughs> Gah. Saturday go. morning, time to wake up at four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every morning, every morning, dude. And it was cold, uncharacteristically cold. Dude. I think that ASG only has two two levels. It's either really cold or blistering hot. This could be true. It was definitely extremely cold early in the tournament, and by Sunday, it was warm and sunny out. Yeah, yeah. t-shirt weather. T-shirt weather. How many teams did you have? I think total we had one hundred and forty six. One hundred and forty six. Damn. Damn. How? Uh, what? Like, what's your guy? What's the record for the WCPPL? That's got to be that had to have said it. I don't really? really look at the records, but I would imagine that was Oof. the largest X ball and three man that we've ever had. Dude. Damn. Yeah. Damn, dude. That shout out. That is great. So actually, because one of the questions I wanted. To, well, actually, the first question I have, Mike, is the snake hot? Always hot. Yeah, yeah. It's hot. It's always, always hot. hot. It is always hot. Can you tell that to the 140-ish teams 
that uh, didn't Slept quite. The yeah, snake. they kept forgetting the snake I was. Gonna, I think a couple of the teams that won had the idea, but the rest of them, <laughs> or that would fill the inside snake when the outside snake was hot. Oh, and I felt like, like I always say, Lee Trevino and Happy Gilmore just shaking my head, like, "Oh Lord, here comes the punishment." Or the guy that would run from their brick to the other team's brick while the snake was hot, and it was like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is crazy. I would crazy. see people in some of the lower divisions, too. Like, someone in the snake would pop out and just miss a shot, and the guy that would be, like, in one of those t- towers or cans would be like, where did those oh, paintballs just co- go over my head from? And then he'd just, like, a couple of seconds later, just catch, like, three more. Like, or 20 more. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, and that's, that's, like, my favorite thing to see. That's my favorite thing to do. It's, like... It's, like, just... just it's so funny to see somebody just get the side of their whole body just blown to bits. Um... Like, oh, again and again, again and, and again, again, and it was the and same. And it, it, it would happen to him multiple <laughs> times in a row, and you're like, so that's kind of like the 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 whole theme of the sh- of the show is like, you know, how to how to make mistakes and learn quickly, yeah. right? How to learn learn faster, and it's just, I, I don't know, you know, it's like when you get stung, and I I actually prefaced it with my team at the end, and I was like, look, or, or I actually kind of explained it, I'm just trying to put it in perspective. It's like, you know, when you get a speeding ticket. You pulled over and you're like, oh shit, my heart's racing. And you're like, dude, I just got a, like an 85 and a 65. Like, oh, I'm screwed. My insurance is going to go up. This is going to happen. And you, for sure, when you pull out, it's not like you're like, well, yeah, you yeah. know, night new will strike twice. You're just like, you're, you're like at the speed limit. You're yeah, like, God yeah. oh, damn it. Yeah. But these fools would get shot by the guy in the snake. And then the guy would get in the snake and they'd be like, well, I'm going to get him this time. And then he'd get worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially with that big of a snake, no breaks in it, no corner. Uh-huh. That's why all the teams that ask me, I'm like, there's no corner on this field. You can't contain the guy. So it's you have to get over there and at least keep the guy honest in the snake. Yeah. No? Mm-hmm. Didn't yeah. work last time or the other time or the other time? Nah. Yeah. No need to fill it again. Yeah. Yeah, man. So um, when you – like, so why do you do blind layouts? I mean – you know, years back when we all had coaching and guys like me standing on the sideline telling people up, down, left, right, and the sixth man of the year, I feel like we just lost a lot of IQ in paintball, right? Mm-hmm. There was kids that just didn't know how to play paintball. So I thought going back to the blind layout would help that. Plus a lot of players that play in our league, like Regime wins our premier, which is kind of, is really semi-pro, right? It's up to 4,800 points, which is semi-pro. Mm-hmm. Like last year, Fit or Blast Camp could have brought their whole roster and played in that division. A lot of guys just don't have time for multiple weekends of layout, right? Like, Yeah. I mean, it's different at the pro level where part of your guys' sponsorship budget is practice pay. Mm-hmm. And even with one weekend of layout, everybody's still playing two weekends. Yeah. You kind of think about it, it's 66.6% most likely, if not 70% of your paint budget or diesels or whoever it is, is just practice pay. Yeah. So for us, with a league where you, like really there's no sponsorship being had, it's better for teams to just be able to show up and play paintball. And it's funny because, you know, people talk about setting the layout up or trying to get a sneak on it, or which we don't allow. And you put it back to the players, like, what do you guys think? I actually put it on the WCBL Facebook page on Thursday night. I think two guys said, let's release the layout. Everybody else is just, I mean, it's like 90 responses of blind layout, blind layout, blind layout. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people just have other lives now, right? Like, people have stuff to do. They have families. But not everybody has three weekends in a row to get ready for a paintball tournament. Yeah, so. that's fair. Yeah, and, and I understand that. Like, it's more economical uh, for for people. It makes it more affordable, and it's just kind of like it, it it is. But it is a struggle too, right? For a lot of people, um, on on just trying to figure stuff out. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think teams have to learn to play a little slower and work in the, you know, same for yourself or all the co- all the pro guys out there coaching you have an idea in the prelims and then by the time you get to the finals or get through the semis and quarters you start coming up with a little more <laughs> complex plans where you can take bigger bites you know mm-hmm. but yeah it was the main reason it seems every time we put something to a poll i always kind of think one way like when we originally did i thought everybody was going to vote at least one or two weekends mm-hmm. and it was a landslide the other way it was one of those ones when i got done with the poll i was like oh, i was definitely wrong about that mm-hmm. so i think just listening to the consumer right yeah, I mean that's obviously important when you when you got a when you got a pro, uh, like a a product that you're trying to make. But I mean, obviously it, it it's working out really well. Um, and dude, it was uh, it was a rad event. This is a great event. Yeah, you know, I really like the layout. Too. Mm-hmm. I thought the layout was awesome. I think they're gonna leave it up 
for us to go practice next weekend. We're, we're practicing oh, up there at ASG. This weekend coming? This weekend, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I think they're probably going to lay it. I was it hoping we were going to get to play it, too. Yeah. Out in Texas. It's it's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, we always seem to come up with pretty good ideas. I mean, normally Thomas would help in years past. This year he's not helping with it with his son playing in Division Five. Mm-hmm. But I think you kind of come up with an idea, let it sit there for 24 hours, come back to it. Usually Sunday night, Monday morning, I start in on them, right? So that way there's no way somebody said they saw it or it was set up or mm-hmm. other layouts can influence it. And then as we get closer to like Tuesday, Wednesday, just keep going through revisions of it. And for all of us that have played a long time, right, multiple paths of aggression in theory, we thought you could go down the snake through the center and also that Dorito side. If you could get a kill on the break, you could definitely turn the angle and get down on it. So. Yeah, I felt like that was what was cool about the Dorito side, too. Like, you needed two guys over there, uh, one, to stop the, their movement, and two, that second guy that if they did slip up and make mistakes, it was kind of, you like, canceled over, out. Yeah. Those two Dorito guys just needed to be alive mm-hmm. in the game because um, if the other team did did screw up and they lost their Dorito side, then you could for sure go down, you could swoop it down. You could down swoop. easy. Yeah, I, I thought there was a lot of meat left on the on, on the on the bone there on the that Dorito, Dorito side, side. yeah. yeah. Um, that was that was our biggest. Actually, that was kind of my biggest problem across the board with uh, with the teams that I coached. I mean, there was a couple. We had a couple issues, right? The snake stung us a lot on the Omega side, but uh, on the on for the Narco side, my Dorito side was like was like big big highs, big lows, big highs, big lows. Great points, horrible points. Yeah. Great points, horrible points. Um, <clears throat> and if you don't have that extra pressure, equal pressure at least yeah then the everything kind of falls apart you really yeah. need everybody to kind of be, be yeah, it was kind of a benefit to being out wide on the dorito side but mm-hmm. there was also benefit of like having two guys kind of in set to mm-hmm. both like work on slowing that side down mm-hmm. um but being out wide too would help like pressure the snake side from across the field which i thought was good how much input yeah. do you have on the layout mike do you do you actually do you actually do the layout now i do because oh, damn. With thomas i mean it, I think we all know Thomas well enough that if Thomas gives you his word on something with, you know, he's pretty set in his word. I don't think Thomas would set it up or leak it out, but right. just for the health of the game. Yeah. You know, I just, this year I went to doing it. Thomas still helps with some of the USXBL ones, but to be fair, I had four or five other layouts we could have used that I had come up with. We had like a symmetrical one, not like the Vegas one, but, seemed like there was a lot of pushback after that event. Mm. You know, just people didn't like, for whatever reason, how it is. You know, Trillism mm. and those guys are in a, a no-win situation. No matter what they do <laughs> to try to do something better for paintball, it just backfires and people... You know, any layout that comes out, everybody's like, F this layout, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then by the end of the weekend, they're like, man, that was a fun layout. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, but they already... Like, it, like that doesn't, that doesn't, like, fix all the bad press they got beforehand. I mean, we always oh, like right. to lay out because we uh, we get to pick which one we like we want to play. <laughs> uh, so we get like a couple extra weeks on it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, hey Ryan, maybe you can let Kyle and them pick because they need a lot. <laughs> yeah, get us in on that. Yeah, get us in on that practice. Yeah, wait a minute. How do you do that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> who, um, what, what out of the two, so how many, so you drove... <laughs> You had the USBX, USXBL the weekend before? No, two weekends. Two weekends before. before. Yeah. Um, and that one went, and that's this is your first season running that fully? Full season. First full season, it, yeah. okay. Um, so we had, 90, we had 90 teams there and came back to 146 here. Jeez. Damn. Um, what to t- find out where all the money's at. Yeah. <laughs> looking for it. All the gold's out in California. I heard that uh, a <laughs> while ago. Right, check that shoe box over there. No, nope, <laughs> not there. Uh, what, um, what event series or what, what league, Texas League or California League, uh, has the best talent? Or more talent, That's or a, it's a tough one. Texas doesn't have the premier, the semi-pro yet. We have, like, a high-end D3 division. Mm-hmm. But if I were to, like, it's funny. In a second, it's, I feel like in any major sport, or same with paintball, you say who's the top three or whatever. The second you answer that question, it polarizes you against other people. <laughs> I know. I'm going to answer. I'm gonna ask you a couple of those. <laughs> well, so there's an interesting one. My girlfriend, Tracy's son, Abel, <laughs> played paintball in Texas last year. He went to an event and one of the shut up were trying teams in Texas needed him. 
and he struggled out there because the guys out there played the pocket really well. Mm. Like they were super, and that was a D four team, super disciplined. If our D four teams out here on the West Coast, like the Omega guys or whoever, mm-hmm. they do not play as disciplined as those Texas guys do. Mm. So, right. I, I mean, I, I honestly think if you were to bring everybody together. We had an Arizona team pole position that won D5 last year. They're D4 this year. They won D4 in Texas at the first event. They traveled out. But I think if you were to bring Texas teams to California, they would equally win as much. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think one region has it more than the other. I mean, Texas is, Texas is a little bit different where you actually have every division working up from D5 all the way up to pro, right? You've yeah. got X Factor, Fit, Diesel, Notorious. I, think, I wouldn't really consider Heat, even though they do play out of Houston now at the Wasteland Field. But then you still have semi-pro teams, Division Two teams, Division Three, all the way down NXL, where California doesn't really have that, right? We have you guys, the Aftermath guys, and the Ironman guys. And after that, I think DMG might have a semi-pro team, but we really don't have any semi-pro or D2 NXL level teams here. So right. in California, it's either the top or... <clears throat> the lower side and then the WC teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I, that makes sense. The, the pocket kind of thing. Cause that's how, that's the Greg Pauly, you know, mentality of, yeah. of, of paintball really. It's like, like the, AC the, Dallas yeah, the, the, yeah. Ma- the no mistake paintball, like get in there yeah. and just play it slow, play it smart, take what they give you and don't overly force it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, another one that's said right now is like Texas is the current like Mecca of paintball. I would point at the numbers would probably say that California still has more teams playing out here. But one thing Texas definitely has is a lot more fields Mm because in Texas, I believe it's easier to get a permit, right? You buy a piece of property and they'll tell you right from Jump Street, we've looked at property and not that we want to open a field, but like Tracy and I have looked at buying property out there and they'll tell you if you're zoned or not. California, you have to jump through so many hoops to get a permit. Like even talking to like Geo at SC Village, like, I don't think he'll ever start a new field. Mm. I think Geo will just take over <laughs> failing fields like he did in Texas and use their permit because to get one, it would just be a nightmare. Like Glenn's dealing with his permit issues, right? It's, just, it's very difficult for any business in California compared to other states, right? We're way over-regulated. Mm-hmm. Even Wayne, like when Wayne got his permit for his field, there was some land out in the back there that got basically turned into protected wildlife be protected because some native tobacco plant that doesn't even grow there is out there so it just got turned into non-usable paintball land i remember fran was looking at a field that was out by victory like in santee or something out there and they're like yeah you can build a field here but you have to pay for a a street light to get put in and yeah that's a seven hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah yeah i remember that like crazy like we don't know what (laughs) So that's where, well, we do, I mean, California, and I'm sure Florida too, but more so California, we don't really have a lot of bad weather, right? Like, we do have some rain, don't get me wrong, but not like Texas, not like Florida. We don't have hurricanes coming through. Yeah. Texas, I remember being out at a diesel practice last year where the guy on the news said it was like the hundred and something day of triple digits in a row. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's just oppressively hot. Yeah, you just can't, yeah, yeah. That's that's. Um... So I think all the regions have really good paintball going right now, right? Like I think you have to have a good regional level. And last year, when Texas had three competing regional leagues, right, the Fit League, USXBL, and Bunker Fest, there's a lot of good paintball coming out of there right now. Yeah. So um... Te- Florida is doing good. The Northeast is doing good. Mid West is doing all right right now. Virgil's got a series out there, so I think as that does better. You see the numbers of the NXL staying up. Yeah, uh, then that's a that's a great one. So you mentioned ambush, uh, and I know Glenn had some permitting issues. Where is the next MP, uh, WCPPL going to be? At ASG. At ASG. 100%. Okay. Yeah. That, you... and we were that was decided before we even went through this <clears throat> event. Okay. So and then after that, we wait to see what happens with Glenn, or if we go to SC Village, or where it is, right? Yeah, Geo. So I mean, Geo has that that the next field set up, um, and he says he's going to keep kind of kind of building out. There was a, it was funny too. Um, it was like right after I talked to you, Mike, I think on Thursday or Friday, and we were like, you're like, yeah, I got 120, 140 teams here. And Brandon Cornell sends me a text. He's like, hey, do you think any of the fields are going to be open so I can run drills this weekend? I was like, <laughs> Brandon, are you fucking kidding me? I was like, you know how many teams are here? I was like, Is that, are you trying to troll me? Yeah. I was like, why are you texting? I was like, you should text Mike. Yeah. 
<laughs> did he end up coming out? Did you see him? Or? I don't think no. so. No. Yeah, I was like, I was like, text Mike, see what he says. <laughs> he knows better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think you kind of kind of makes sense. Yeah, that makes, yeah. That makes sense. Um, what about like a? <clears throat> well, I guess it's been it's kind of early to say, but what about expanding the WCPPL out to the East Coast and the you know other other portions or areas? I mean, I think we have ideas of moving outside of our current spheres of influence, but we'll take it at the end of the year and kind of look at where we're at. Like, you know, no matter what we do, I've said this in other shows that I've been on, like, no matter what I do, it's always going to be me against the NXL, right? When in all reality, like, I knew Tom shared the dates with me long before World Cup this year. <laughs> we didn't hold, that's why we didn't hold our first event until way after. Mm-hmm. Las Vegas to try to give teams the ability to play both leagues. You know, no matter what we do, we feel it'll always be us with them because we're the second largest and it's not even close, right? Like it's NXL is the big guy. We're little brother. But for us, it's just trying to have this platform of, you know, low cost, high quality reps. That's what how I view it. Kind of like the premier division for WC, it's 8,000 points. We really don't respectfully want any of you guys playing in it because we know you would change the outcome. Either you two, Mouse, Marcelo would be a massive difference maker. Mm-hmm. Guys like GJ, Cyrus from, you know, Fit was out there. Like the pro guys that haven't earned their stripes yet. We were cool with that, you know, having one or two of them out there. But for us, that's kind of our goal was just to focus on the divisional players and give them the best experience, you know. Yeah, I actually, I, I really like the way that you do it. I mean, as much as I'd like to be playing these events, I think it's I think it's cool the way you do it to allow those guys. Yeah. And and actually, that was one of my big knocks on uh, on when you were running aftermath, is because uh, you had cheap you had your you had your aftermath guys uh, refing the events. But I always said I was like, dude, the best experience for a player who's kind of like right there, like right on the precipice, is being able to play in those types of events because it gives them a, a, a like a stronger sense of confidence and allows them to like be able to be the guy on the team Mm -hmm. where in, in oftentimes where they're on the team, it's like, they're not really the guy or they're not quite confident with being the guy. And so they get to have that, that, that thing. It's like when we used to go out to Europe, it's the same type idea. When you get to guest with a team or South America or Australia, when you're the pro guy on a divisional roster, you know, and especially if you're not like a top 10 guy or a top 20 guy, it really helps your, your confidence level and really, like builds your your character and just you know you get to do more and obviously play more paintball. So that was like always one thing that I, I was like ah I mean I know why you had your guys co- uh, ref the events it always made things easier but at the same time it would well it was the yeah. real reason was because you know it comes to a one on one my an aftermath player outplays somebody else yeah it's always gonna come down to well he got the benefit of the call because he's one of Mike's guys like the collusion nonsense that we hear even to this day is for sure dumbfounding like i hear rumors and talks that just i yeah you you both know me very well but i i can't even respond to anymore i just like i don't <laughs> even have a comeback there's no micism for it or you're just like you really think <laughs> like, it's a it's a really bad business play to screw over the people paying you you yeah. know what i mean like i don't i know one thing at the end of the day tracy and i aren't winning because we're handing out thirty five or forty thousand dollars in cash to the teams that win, and we never seem to win, or the teams that we have never seem to win. Like it's just crazy. Yeah, you know. Can I? I have a story that I heard. I think from Tyler Harmon. Maybe you heard about this too. <laughs> Let's to bring this up to you. I heard in a. I forget what division it was. Uh, I think it was on Sunday that it was uh, these two players there on the same team. They had shot everyone, and um, they just needed to hang the buzzer. One of the players bunkered. His teammate, and then the teammate spun, <laughs> spun on him. So they got a major. <laughs> and it was under sixty seconds. <laughs> Stop it! They got a swing play. Did that happen? Can you confirm this? Uh, something like that did happen. <laughs> I, just, I wish I was coaching that team. <laughs> I wish you were you coaching that team. I'm like, I wish you were coaching that team. Like, I don't know. Gotta pack it up. Just, just like, throw, we're done. Just throw. We're done. <laughs> Yeah, there's, you know, it's crazy as running a paintball league and the amount of games that we see played. You see every crazy scenario where, like, you're driving home, like Ryan said, just beat tired from a day, and you're like, how could that have ever happened? Like, <laughs> you know, like last year we had one where it's a one on one, right? Me versus Kyle. Kyle shoots me, he wins the point, but 
but then the ref runs in and they find a hit on his pack in between the pods. So not only do you not win the point, I win the point on the swing. Now you have to start the next point down bodies. Yeah. And you talk about like just an anticlimactic swing of events. You just sit back, you're like, what happened? Yeah. No mm-hmm. fucking way. I wonder so. the refs too, and that, they're you're like, uh, yeah, that was a spin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, I guess you have to call a major. Yeah, but... you spun. <laughs> yeah. You did spin and shoot him. Yeah, yeah. Not allowed to do that. Yeah. It was your buddy. <laughs> yeah. It's still a major. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the problem is a lot of divisional guys really don't even understand the rule book. Yeah. Right? We refer to it as the urban myth rule book that they go by, <laughs> where there's like rules that they think exist. And like, again, I just sit there looking at them with shaking my head, like, what the fuck? Like, that's never been a rule, yeah. actually. Yeah. I, w- I would actually like to, I mean, I've never read the rule, rule book like in its entirety, actually really much at all. Um, but I wonder if the rules say you have to, el- when you if you were to cheat, does it have to be to eliminate a, any player or does it have to be an opponent? Mm. That's probably any player. That was, that was the question that I was going over with like Ahow, the pro field head ref. <laughs> we were all, and Timmy and all the guys from the pro field, we were going over it. <laughs> Which you... just turned into more of a laughing situation than a What did we do? I don't know, situation. dude. Give that fool a major. I don't know what the exact was, one is, was but t- let's give that fool a major for sure. Tyler was <laughs> like, "Every yeah, you definitely de- deserved a major just for how idiotic that was. <laughs> like, all right. Fair enough. Oh, that's great. That's good. Um, When's US XBL is next, right? Yeah, in the main. <laughs> Back and fit. And we're, I, I don't think we're going to be, well, it depends. I don't see what pros will be out at the next WC because it's it two overlaps weekends on that practice. Yeah. 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 Um, it's the second weekend before, yeah, not the layout weekend. Right. It's the, it's the one it's the one that's like, yeah, the, the, the non-layout weekend. Yeah. But I don't those think are I'm, easy to yeah. move. Yeah. Those are easy to move around. I don't know if we will uh, be able to get it squeezed out of that one. So. Ooh, it's a tough one. Which yeah. is going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of pro coaches that could not be at that event. Yeah, yeah. that'll be dun, dun, dun. that will be yeah dun, dun, yeah. Dun. I mean that'll be good no, for for some teams. Yeah, growing pains. Yeah, and see how see how guys could could uh, could fare and and hopefully you kind of like it's one of those things when when I'm like oh crap I can't be there to coach like if I've had like Scott coach or I had Rusty coach one time I'm like. All right, coach him, but don't win. Yeah, you don't want to. Don't win because yeah, you then, want... you know, like, if you win, I might not have a job after yeah, this. Yeah, you don't <laughs> so you gotta too good. Roll yeah. in the second. Yeah. Roll roll over in the second, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, who was, speaking Speaking of coaching, um, you're, uh, you've coached a lot of players. A lot, a lot, a lot of players. Who is your – actually, before I ask who your favorite was, how do you know or how quickly can you can you find out if a player, like, has it? Like, if they, like – if they're going to be something – because, dude, you've, you've arguably made, like, the best paintball players, some of the best, from, from like, the ground up. You know, Mouse, Dalton, you um, – yeah, can't even name them all. But Rainy. Like, Rainy. Rainy. That's yeah. right. You know? Um, Marcelo. Marcelo. Yeah. Uh, so, multiple – I mean, just grit, right? You're just looking for gritty people, right? Like, that's always... Even, like, when Kyle moved out, right? He was living in Florida, got his car and drove out, lived in my house for, what, nine months or a year or whatever. Yeah. Like, people that are willing to truly make it happen, right? Like, jump through hoops to to live the dream, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, the original after kids, the Aftermath kids, I mean, they had to fucking take some serious punishment because I was absolutely <laughs> insane at that point. You know what I mean? But it's funny, though. Every one of those guys to this day, every year, always sends me a random message, like, thanking me mm. for all that we I put them through. I mean, I think Mouse might still have some PTSD about it. <laughs> the, rest of them, the rest of them seem all right. You know what I mean? But, no, I mean, you know, Ryan, like, you've coached a million people too. Some people you can just tell Mm -hmm. have the it factor. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's funny as much as people like give me a hard time about coming down on people. I coached you on dynasty and you and I didn't have to say a lot of words to each other. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, I always tell people that, right? Because people will be like, ah, I don't know about Ryan. And I'm like, man, honestly, Ryan was the best dude I ever had on Dynasty because it's just some shit had to get done and you went and got something done. You know what I mean? Like, there was never, like, ego measuring or, 
you know, who's smarter than this? Like, I thought you and I had a great relationship. Yeah, you know I agree. I mean? And I, to this day, right? Like, <clears throat> mm-hmm. so I think you've only think, tried. You've ahead. only yelled at me or tried to kill me one time. <laughs> one time. I don't think so. Um, but there was a we net. We had an agreement. You there was I. a net. There was, there was a net in between us. <laughs> it was at the old. It was at the original panel camp Pendleton Field on their 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 speedball sign side. And I was talking to one of your guys, and you said something, and I think I might have said something to the tune of, "Shut up, Mike." And then you didn't like that. <laughs> you didn't like that. And I then, but there was that. a net in front of us. And so you're like, I'm going to kill yeah, you. And I was like, well, like 18 years old, right? I, I, I was... said, I'm faster than you. And you go, I will run until I'm dead. <laughs> and I go, all right, listen, let's calm down because I don't want to die. Um, and uh, you took it out of contest. Like I was just, I wasn't oh, yelling God, at you. I wasn't so talking dead. shit to your guy. I was just That's talking good. to him about something. And you thought I was yelling at him. It's all right. Then there was a, luckily there was a net. So it like let a little bit of the steam out. And then you realize like I meant no harm. In all fairness, it took me a lot of years to grow up. So that's on me. <laughs> um, but you have, so what's your involvement with the Academy guys? Cause your cat is Academy. Anything with that, that kind of had to do with you or does have to do with you or, but well, you- it had to do with me. Cause when Cody, Woodruff, <laughs> which is Wayne that runs mm-hmm. aftermath, mm-hmm. his son, Cody came up to aftermath. Cody was on the gummy bears and the gummy bears, I believe at that point, were kind of built to be Cody's team, right? Like that was, Wayne put a lot of resources into it. Mm-hmm. Once Cody went up to Aftermath, and he deserved to be there. It's not yeah. like Wayne paid for anything for Cody to be there. We right. wanted Cody on the team. Yeah. You know, I think Wayne's focus and his son's focus became playing pro paintball, which, right. like we all know, a lot of young guys get there, and it's a whole lot more effort to stay there. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of the Gummy Bear kids, you know, it just didn't, it didn't hold together. Guys started falling apart. They didn't, you know, the kids at ASG, the Gummy Bear kids and the Academy kids now have a really good deal with Wayne. Wayne and Karen take care of them. They help set the fields up, tear them down. They get free entry. Mm -hmm. Wayne helps them with other stuff. And at that point, a lot of those Gummy Bear kids didn't want to do it. It broke up. And there was a lot of kids around. And Abel, my other son, you know, needed a team to play on. Bryce needed a team to play on. So we kind of put that together. But I don't really, Julian runs it. They have, I think, Brandon Trujillo coached them. Mm-hmm. I just, it gives me a place to go out. ASG's down the street. The third field down is the academy field on Wayne's floor fields. And those guys let anybody come out and practice with them. Like little Brandon will come out and run drills mm-hmm. with them. Just a place for people to work out together. Vibe, all the other teams have come out there. And just play paintball together with no politics or no nonsense, right? Just, just some people would like my input and some people don't and if you don't there's plenty of other fields and if you do it's like a free clinic or whatever you want to call it and just working together um how do you feel about the team name gummy bears do you think that had something to do with them breaking up i don't know it's a pretty sweet name man gummy bears (laughs) is a solid name they had a cool little logo of a gummy bear on it i mean i don't think that was it i just think uh okay okay a lot of teams you know after two or three years they go up, they go down, right? So, the Acad- I just told the Academy kids something Mike Paxson told me years back and something that Dynasty is all about to this day. It's not a one-year commitment. It's a multiple-year commitment, yeah. right? And you have to stick it out. and Because everybody, just like the teams that you guys coach, you know, you're here for, like, we're doing this this year, but it's not just this year. It's yeah. next year. It's the year after. And you can take a lot of players that are 50-50 players, maybe not the greatest individual talents, especially in divisional paintball, and keep them on the same team. And all of a sudden, you have really good teams because guys know how to play great together. Mm -hmm. Totally. So that's kind of with those kids. And, I mean, we all see it in Southern California. It's like music. I'm sure every region that has a lot of players is that way. Everybody, you know, there's 10 chairs, and everybody at the end of the year gets up, moves over one, sits down, and puts that jersey on. The next year, they do it again. And these same players wonder why they never rise above D4 or D3 because they don't ever have that cohesion. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes to say, too, uh, there was um, that team, Grind City, that had a lot of good players in Premier. Yeah. And they didn't... J-Max team. Yeah. They didn't I mean, do what, yeah. X-Factor guy, they had, like... I wa- And I watched some of those games, like, they had really good players. It's just, like, you know, when you throw a team together, too, against all these other teams that have been playing in that league for many years... It's like, it's not a, it's like it's not an guys, easy league. It's like the TJ Bastard guys, they used to be West Coast Takedown. And that core, Tyler and all those guys, have, and the brother, they've been playing paintball for a long time together. Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven years, whatever it is. 
Yeah. It just helps, right? Like so. And I'm always that's careful with like bringing guys is in. Trying to get them to all stick on a team and just see it through. Yeah. <clears throat> um. I do like. I think. I think what the academy guys are doing is cool. I, I like that name too. I prefer the that name. Name's, that name. That's a sweet. very, very cool. That's a very approved. good name. Speaking yeah, speak of span approved. We, we kind of, we kind of harp, not harp. We give some people a hard time with their choice of team names, like "Shut Up, We're Trying." Or I mean, I don't even love the TJ Bastards name. That's I was gonna say, I, what do you, what do you short, think? Of, what do you I'm think short. of the TJ Bastards? Like the bastards. <laughs> I mean, it's a unique name. It's one that we haven't heard before. <laughs> yeah, there you but go. it's definitely one of those ones where you're like, eh, it's different. <laughs> I just, I like to take the vowels out for the jersey and smash it together so it looks a little bit easier. Ryan, what do you think about the silly bananas? Dude, we were just talking like, about those guys. They play with bananas in their pockets, I think. And they give the other teams bananas that's, before they play them. That's what they do. That's what they do. I think they got second place in D5, and I don't think they ever expected to make it out of the prelims. I think they are <laughs> Good truly for those there. Guys just to have fun and all of a sudden they're in the finals and I'm like man these guys are going to pull it out <laughs> they're like we're out of bananas <laughs> they gave away like 300 bananas or something like that dead serious I'm not even like I believe it I see them walking out with bundles of bananas and I'm just like what? <laughs> they've given they've given me a banana before <laughs> that's like they but, probably remember that but that's that's the be- that's the bat that's the best thing about it right cause like Look, you have 146 teams, right? And same thing with the NXL. Um, you've got several hundred teams that are coming in there. There are the guys that know they can win, okay? Right? There's the guys that believe they might, they can win. And then there's all these, a lot of people living in fantasy land. They don't put the preparation time in it. They just, for some reason, are in disbelief and they think that they're better than they really are. They don't need coaching. They've got all this stuff. They think they've, they've got everything dialed in. And then you've got guys that are there going, I'm going to play my four matches. If I win those, win something, maybe I'll make it to the fifth one. Who knows? But I'm not. I, I, I've, I have this realization that I'm, I'm going to get out what I put into it, but I'm going to have a good time. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. you don't get disappointed when you have that, when you have, when you're just realistic with yourself. And it's such a funny thing when people are so unrealistic with like, what the reality is going to be, sure. um, but shout out to the, the those guys for just being like, you know what, I want because I wish because I think more people would have more fun and they would probably end up doing better, and it would like cut down a lot of the nerves of playing because if you have so much yeah, pressure on yeah. you because you're like, what this is? and then you stop blaming Mike and the refs and all this collusion and all this bullshit and Tom Cole yeah. and the other refs and the foreign refs and you got those the guys from Venezuela let hate me, me let you me know? address the foreign refs really quick so <laughs> I'm at USXBL right uh-huh. Monday we're doing teardown and we have to pack the trailer the massive 40 some foot trailer right mm-hmm. and it's taken a long time so Alicia that was the head ref for the NXL I think she got the award or whatever she was driving guys back and forth and we had to take one guy from Ecuador so Tracy and I took him, which Tracy's sitting right over here off camera. I hey! <laughs> Went up for that. So uh, we drive the guy. And, you know, I've always heard the South American refs thing, right? They don't know English or this or that. And, like, it, Daniel was his name, and we drove him. And I just asked him, you know, like, you work two days at $200 a day, right? It's really not. Like, that <laughs> yeah. 400 bucks isn't worth that. And, you know, he's from Ecuador. He's a photojournalist. He makes $300 a month down there. So it makes sense for him to fly to America, you know, stay on somebody's couch, make 400 bucks, maybe get another tournament next weekend, and then probably buy clothes or something and take it back. Like he's on a tourist visa selling clothing back in his country and work for that. And like just my two cents, like as Americans, that's about as American as it gets right there, right? Like coming to this country, Mm -hmm. working harder than anybody else wants to work, putting in... 12, 14, I mean, most refs are Dude. 12 to 14 hours a day, whether it's NXL, WCBL, USXBL, MVPS, whatever league it is, putting in crazy amount of time to make Nothing. Less, less than minimum wage. Mm-hmm. And even like the South American guys, Friday night, of course, they got Chick-fil-A for dinner. We, we the league buy them dinner and take them to the hotel so they don't have to go out. They can just eat, sleep, and go about it. But that night and the next night were pizzas. Each of the nights, they're already downstairs in the lobby having a team meeting about critiquing their own refing and what they saw of each other. And just watching that, like, 
most other refs from America are, you know, out drinking beers, jerking off, just doing whatever they're going to do. These guys are really taking it serious. And I just, for everybody out there that, like, throws stones at the South American refs, those dudes absolutely worked harder. And I believe most of those guys are probably on the NXL setup and teardown crew. Yeah. Our setup and teardown crews. And for the amount of money they make, those dudes work really hard. So as much Good as enough. they may not know the best is English, they definitely know the they, I'm serious. Those guys know the rule book. And, you know, I watch penalties come out, right? You're trying to understand it, especially from a league promoter's point of view. You're trying to understand the penalty. And I saw 100 flags fly, and I can honestly say there was not one flag that after I got an explanation of what it was or you see the hit, you're like, man, that was the right call. You know what I mean? So hats off to all those guys. We, I think we flew in 24 guys this weekend mm-hmm. yeah. for the wrapping, and I think in 16 years it was the smoothest tournament we've ever had. Yeah, I didn't really see anything yeah, that was like... Yeah, Brian Booth said it was great. We, we got hosed in our, in our uh, uh, D4 round two first game pretty pretty bad only on one point though on one point but uh but other than that i i agree like i i think i liked on it was uh well the field two refs were definitely like they they play played no bullshit you know like if you got shot and you were playing on like you're gonna get a penalty if they have to yell oh, at you the rule says, and, right? and it but should be right I, and i like that but it was consistent on both sides so i was happy with that like i'm i'm, and I'm cool. okay as long as it's consistent for if it's not just, you know, one team versus the other, like if the guy's like, Hey, you're hit, Hey, you're hit, get out. Then it's, you know, I'm, I, I'd say, I think how it should be. Which is interesting on that. Cause that field was a how, which is your pro ref head ref. You've got a couple like left and right side or other guys that are pro level guys. Mm-hmm. The other guys are semi pro and divisional NXL guys, but none of them are from this time zone. You know what I mean? So they don't right. know who's playing. They just yeah. know this team's versus that team. Sure. Sure. There's a hit on you. And you know, for all of us on the coaching side, of the box or the, the pit side, you see somebody come out and you're like, there's no hit on him. And then they do a 180 and you see a huge hit in their pack or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And you hear the divisional coaches will be like, well, they didn't pull my guy out. It's not our job to pull you out. Right. It's your job to call yourself out. But if you are playing with a hit on you and you're shooting your gun, it's a penalty. Yeah. Like, it just is what it is. Or you're, you don't even have to shoot your gun if you're trying to slow down, you know, if Ryan seems trying to burn the corner, that guy dives in there for 10 seconds sitting there. Yeah. While we're still pounding the outside of the bunker, it completely throws off the course of the game. If mm-hmm. you know you're hit and you're trying to stay on the field, it's a penalty. And I, sure. I truly mean this. I think a lot of divisional guys don't understand the rule book. They they really don't. No. They think the ref has to come pull them out. If you can, and especially when they look at one, like it's on, you know, where yeah. both these logos are on my shirt, and they're like, is that a hit? You're like, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah then that's yeah. a penalty. Or when like, what like I was on asking, on what I was wrist, asking. Like, yeah, is this, is hey, this, can you come yeah. check my yeah. wrist? Like, well, dude, like, I was asking you, you're going to throw a penalty? I mean, I was asking you, like, dude, yeah. No, I, I, know, I, I, like, I, under, I understand all that. No, that's it. And, and for sure, those guys don't always. Uh, I told my D4 no. guys, too, on Sunday, because they had to come over to the premier field. I was like, this, these refs are, are strict. Like, they, they're not messing around, so make sure you guys are... But, you know, in, in events past, I watched, like, Notorious before they were a pro team. They came and played. Those dudes would get hit, and before you could even look for the hit, they were running out of bounds. And you tell the refs, they're looking at each other like, man, it's going to make my life a lot easier. Yeah. They're not just going to throw a penalty. But when you're out there, and I feel like, and again, I never have talks with the refs about the job that they're doing. I definitely stand up for them, but I let them be independent and run their own show. But, like, you know... you. You have to. I think at some point refs know. Same with the pro division. Certain guys get dirty a lot, and the refs are kind of like, "Man, didn't catch you on that one, Holiday, but I'm going to get you on the next one." Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think refs just kind of know. Like you're watching guys get dirty out there, and you're like, "You keep doing that, and sooner or later it's going to catch up to you." Uh-huh. I always like when someone you can see someone moving like kind of awkward, <laughs> and then you see the ref run over from across the field, and he comes kind of looks looks over, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, "All right, yep, there it is." Yeah, I see you. Yeah, flag. Gotcha. Got your ass. Who is uh who is your favorite uh player to coach? I mean that's such a tough one because the second I say one name. Uh yeah. dude, come on, get him. <laughs> then your phone blows up. Uh you how about your top five? Well, I mean, number one at the top of the list is probably Mouse, right? Okay. Because I, Mouse and I, as much as he's 
<laughs> crazier than I am. And Kyle, and Kyle, you know he is. I actually told him that this weekend. You did when I, I was right about, right next to you guys. Yeah. But I, I love Mouse no matter what. That dude's going to be my friend until my last breath. But with him, it was always easy. He knew what we needed to do. So when I'd be going to the box to call the play with him out on the field, he would already know corner, snake, whatever. And you're like, man. When you have a snake guy that wants to take the bite, that definitely helps. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, he's up there. I mean, it's not just because we're on the show, but obviously, Ryan is right up there with it because no matter who you are, when Ryan's on the field, like, when you're playing against Ryan and Ryan's eliminated, you're happy. You're like, man, <laughs> three on three, we got a good chance on this one. Yeah. You could be up five on two with Ryan being one of the two, and you're like, man, yeah. this dude's going to pull some shit. You know what I mean? So, without a doubt, Ryan's up there as well. I mean, all those guys that we played with on Dynasty back then, mm -hmm. right? I, you could name any of them. Marcelo, right? Like, Rainey. Dalton, for so sure. So many of them. Got to be Dalton, too. You know what's funny with Dalton, though? Like, <laughs> when Dalton first came to us, he was not good at paintball. No. Like, you can ask him. He went to the Xbox. That was his job with his Angel I-3 <laughs> and just waited to get punished. You know what I mean? But I, I like Dalton. I don't think he was the bait. Ever that close. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't ever send me too many messages. But <laughs> Dalton was a good player. He definitely got a whole lot better after he left. Mm. Not that he wasn't good. I'm just saying they got a lot better. Mm. He kept getting better throughout the years. But, no, I mean, everybody, you guys know how it is. Yeah. Like, Ryan, you played with everybody, right? And everybody's come to the Dynasty camp. Everybody has a special memory, right? In a special place, you know. What I mean, like Kyle lived in my house for a good amount of time, right? Dude, my, me too. And I was, I was super, <laughs> I was super tough no, no. on, <laughs> I was super tough like... on Kyle. But you know what I mean? Like I good. think Kyle to this day is starting to he realize it. it was never personal. Yeah. Even though he still probably twitches in his sleep. And <laughs> and, you know, like I think he realizes it's it really is never personal. So no, but even when you came to Diesel, it was like we had a great. Mm -hmm. great bond great uh line of communication it was yeah he was said he, he spoke he spoke really highly of that that kind of interaction little he was a little you know i think you even told him you yeah, like, yeah i wasn't sure but i was, I was nervous like, Dude, at this first is, yeah this is the best thing that's happened but then that team. first practice too that was like one of the best practices i've played in like years a big oh. practice with like you mm -hmm. guys yeah. coming into it i looked at i watched all the tape on kyle and it was like okay you know, Kyle's here. How do we get just a little bit more out of mm -hmm. Kyle? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And also not putting Kyle in a position where he doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, letting him play to his strengths. So, yeah, it was a fun time. That You, Mouse, everybody was a fun time for all of two tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't ask you who your least favorite person to coach is unless you want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Ragey. Oliver. Nah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I love Oliver. We all love Oliver, right? Like, and so that's such a tough one, too, right? Because yeah. uh, we all love Oliver. And I, to this day, I'm still learning things that Oliver said to me back then. The positivity and all that stuff. Like, it's still, I, I hear Oliver's words to this day. I just crazy that we were on those championship teams together. Uh -huh. And, like, I'm not saying this because we're on the show, Ryan. Like now, people are starting to talk about Ryan being the longest, greatest player standing. But like, without all of the other guys that were doing their jobs yeah. and their roles, the you know, and again, I was constantly in the penalty box because being in the back center, being <laughs> back, I was constantly thrown back there. But I got to see Oliver play some of the greatest paintball he ever played. Yeah. But if you didn't, I mean, like. We're up 19 to 1 on Ultimate, and Angel's like, hey, is there any chance I can go over there to the Dorito side? And it's like, nope, you're going to the Snake again, Big yeah. Daddy Ainge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there were so many role players on those teams that made Oliver what he is, and like, so on and so forth. But I, I, Oliver and I always had a great relationship, mm -hmm. to be totally fair. It's not like, I don't think anybody on Dynasty and I had a bad relationship. No, I don't right? think so at all. I think the only good, the thing is, back then when you had 15 guys on a roster, there's guys you're closer to and guys you're not closer to this because there's so many people like now, like on diesel cow, you guys have eight or nine guys, seven, eight guys. <clears throat> it's easier to be tighter with seven or eight guys than it was it with three a, lines yeah. of guys yeah. and coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but no, I'm, all things considered, I'm super grateful. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. there's definitely been some guys that have burned out of my camp where you just look at them like, what are you doing, man? Like, 
there were, yeah, I'm not going to name any names because it'll become clickbait. But <laughs> <laughs> Mike hates there. this person. Um, dude, it, it was actually I, I always like I always love this story when you were coaching. Uh, I think we were out at uh, at the Victory Park, and you were like, "He's running right there!" Like just this is like the this is like the ballsiest play for a coach, right? Um, you're like, he's running right there. He's just going to, you know, where he's going. I'm calling it out. Fucking shoot him. Yeah. It's that easy. And someone chirped up and you're like, give me your gun. And you're like, run to the snake. And then the first time, boom, you shoot him. And they're like, did I get you? And they're like, yeah. You're like, see, <laughs> boom, with the gun rack in the guy's head. Like that's such a ballsy play. And we talk about it all the time about like high quality coaching and coaches like it for divisional people. It's so hard, right? To get a coach. that's really good. And I was actually, it's funny, I was just talking to the Tonic kids, and they were like, those, those, guys, those guys are like, they're, they're, they're great dudes, they're, they're funny, they're really funny, and like, they kind of know what they're doing, but they lack a lot of organization, and they're like, yeah, some guy wants to coach us, but what the, what the fuck does he guy know, this guy know, you know? But it's like, you want to have a coach that can do it, right? If you're, if you have a quarterback coach that can't throw a fucking ball... Or never thrown him yeah, doesn't never even thrown the ball in in the big leagues. You know, you don't want that guy. But like when you did that, I'm a always I'm always gonna use that story when I'm telling talking to people about coaches. It's like, hey, you know, like my coach, you know, said to do this, this, and this. I'm like, what are his what are his accolades before well, before you tell him? I think being a coach, right? There's a couple mm-hmm. things you gotta have. You gotta be respected, right? Because if your team doesn't respect you, you've lost the locker room. I think at some level, there's got to be a small bit, or in Kyle's case, a lot of fear right of the coach that there's actually going to be some level of punishment coming down if players just don't stick to the script and like we were saying right in in other sports too it's hard if you've never actually done it yourself Mm -hmm. as a coach right for sure like a lot of nfl guys are ex-nfl players not all of them but a lot of them are so at least you can say like i've actually done this and this is why so you're totally right like as a coach you have to have at least two of those things but if you have three of them i mean same with Skinny. Why I think Skinny is the best coach out right now, but also he knows you guys as well as you guys know you guys, mm-hmm. right? Like since, since playing... the, like we played nineteen ninety eight World Cup together. Yeah, totally. You know, um... so he's done it. He knows what he's talking about. He's super intelligent. And if people keep making mistakes, I mean, not that Skinny's going to whack him upside the head, but <laughs> you know he's not wrong in what he's saying. Yeah, he might. But... He might. He might. He's yelled at us. Uh, it's and it's funny, pretty funny that that the bench. super yeah. like rrr, yeah rrr, 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 his face guys. gets red dude and, and uh yeah <laughs> he about passes it out um he about, about passes out for sure um um I, I, when was the last time you played paintball hard to say no. I think I messed around well when Bryce was playing I definitely had to play him one on ones right that's right that's right at Camp Pendleton and I definitely cheated a lot. But uh, besides that, I think the last tournament I played was seven-man Las Vegas with the Pirates. I think I played a couple games with them at the Riviera. All right. And that was brutal. And I think I also jumped in the Stone Assassins. Might have been before or right after that because, like, be real or whoever couldn't go. So Rojo asked me to jump on and play a couple points with them. But that that cement parking lot on with turf on top of it was pretty rough oh, on the bottom. Rough. Yeah. Rough on the on the body for sure. Somebody actually asked if you were thinking about um, doing any events, any other any other spots besides um, like maybe Vegas or Arizona yeah, instead of just California. I mean, we've talked about Vegas. We Tracy and I have gone and looked at the same place the NXL just was. The problem is right now Vegas doesn't have much water, and that place was pretty dry. Yeah, it was. I, I just don't see a big like spending thirty grand to rent the place plus move all the logistics in, buying more compressors and stuff like that. I just don't see a big. You're gonna spend one hundred and fifty grand real quick to go there. I mean, our business model is kind of help fields build their infrastructure, sure, so we can do them there because no knock at Tom. They are a totally bigger show than we are, but they spend a lot of money to move trucks in, set up, tear down, and when they're all said and done, it's got to be a hundred grand plus to do mm-hmm. that. And there's no benefit left for the sport of paintball. Again, not throwing stones. I'm just saying our business model. We would rather help Wayne or Glenn or mm-hmm. whoever it is, or in Texas, you know, Fit or whoever it is, build more fields, so we have more space. 
I like it too because the uh, there's nothing in in California besides your event, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there, there's some there's some smaller, smaller ones, <clears throat> smaller little places there. Um, Vegas Venom is saying Sunset Park in uh, uh, lots of places. Are, are there no paintball facilities that can handle the infrastructure in Vegas? Yeah. No, they have LDTP, which has, like, barely one field, and then Buddy has the one field where everybody practices <laughs> before Vegas that they only have one field each. Nobody has four. Now that Buddy's the Vegas Extreme that closed down years ago where uh-huh. we used to hold the events, right. that is gone. No, I think you would have to go way outside of Vegas and find an open piece of property to build, and to I build. just don't think. I mean, Vegas is so hot in the summer. It's right. like a six-month business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that makes sense. I, I thought for some reason, and maybe that's the field that closed. There was one that one that had like three fields. It was there. right next to Craig. Yeah, it was, okay. they had two. They were gonna build a third <laughs> one, and he had plenty of space. But I think the property got sold. Ah, well, yeah. I mean, it was literally like five hundred yards from the edge of that Craig Ranch where you yeah. guys just were. Remember that. Um, someone asked, <clears throat> um, based on your knowledge. An experience, if you were to make the perfect paintball player, what qualities would you build into them? Athletic, humble, intelligent. You know, it, for all the guys out there wanting to get to that level, I think it takes 10,000 hours to master your craft and become pro in paintball. And I think it takes another 10,000 hours to stay where you two guys are, mm-hmm. right? Or myself, or like on the coaching side, it's just a lot of time. Like, even for like Kyle, like, I'm sure Kyle didn't set out. If you would have said when you were leaving Florida, driving out to my house, you're going to be a guy that's coaching players, getting paid a bunch of money to coach divisional players, I don't think you could have ever imagined it no. at that time. No. But you've now been through years and decades of playing paintball, and with that comes the knowledge of the game. And we've all, when we've been doing it as long as we all have, you've failed enough that you know what not to do. Yeah. Except for Ryan, who seems to keep winning in average. <laughs> that's actually uh, that's actually I, I a good what I wanted to talk about too about with the layout is like, what is it? <clears throat> you know, you, you mentioned a couple of things there about like the perfect player and and, and we were talking about like, so uh, Kyle, will you bring up the will you find a a, a a copy of the layout and I'll put it I'll put it up here, mm-hmm. but like. So the layout was, I thought the layout was awesome. Like, right. You had that, that snake where you can literally crawl all the way down it and shoot everybody in the back. And we've talked about it a million times about like how easy that is to do and what, like just get in the snake. Right. And you had that, you had like a couple of spots that could kind of see it, but there was, there was one spot in particular that can, it was the only person on the field that could see the snake, the entry. Like if he wasn't looking there, I mean the center, that center brick could kind of see a couple little windows, but like, um, not, not the easiest, right? It wasn't the easiest. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it up so everybody can kind of see, uh, what I'm talking about. But there were so many teams that like the guy would get into the snake, right? And then they would just destroy everybody. Mm -hmm. Or someone like Kyle would get into the snake and absolutely just destroy the other team. And your team would be like, yes, like my guy got in there and shot everybody. Or like, or you just get shot by the guy a million times. But what is it about people's innate inability to like have to remember that that just happened either yeah. to them or because of their guy? Like, why do you? Why you do? Have why like do players? Gold fat, I mean, goldfish my, guess, my yeah. best guess would be a lot of guys are out there kind of larping, right? Live action role playing. Like uh-huh. they, I mean, as much as Ryan, you don't want to go get in that snake, and I don't want to go get in that snake. I know I've walked a lot of fields close to you. <laughs> And I've heard Oliver and this Alex and Yosh and everybody talk about going to these bunkers. And I've heard you in very few words be like, that is the dumbest idea I've heard. We have to go here and go down here, and this is how we're going to win. Mm-hmm. And I think we all see the field like that. I think a lot of other guys don't see the field like that. Sure. I think a lot of other people see the field. Maybe I kind of can. I want to. I think. I feel. Where guys like all the rest of us, it's not personal. We know if we go down this snake, it's a five piece. Yeah, and, and it, it, but it was just it was just so interesting. You know, like I always say when I'm when I'm like coaching guys, it's like, hey, share the experience, right? So, for instance, if Kyle and I were trading off going as the number one in the snake, and Kyle had a good point, it's like 
he would tell me what would work or what's great. Or I would tell him about my pitfalls and he would tell me how to overcome them or, or we'd solve the problems together. Oh, yeah. But it's like people keep everything to themselves so much and they don't like to share. And, and a lot of it has to do with like people are kind of reluctant to say that they have any weaknesses, right? Because they don't want to have it looked down upon. They don't want to make it seem like, oh, this guy's incapable of doing a job because he's struggling. When in reality, like you're just kind of trying to solve the problem. But like, man, I just... It was so frustrating just watching games where this guy, the guy would go to that can and he would play and, uh, and then he would like look inside or he would just dive into a spot and then guys would just slide right onto the snake. I mean, it happened to us multiple times after we talked about it and then we'd talk about it in the pit and then it would kind of like happen again. And I remember I was watching cause I, I needed that tonic team to lose against the AZ Alliance or something like that to make it in. So Omega D4 would make it in and I'm like, <laughs> And I'm like, I'm watching, I'm watching AZ Alliance. They would go to that can and the guy would look inside and the tonic kid was going to the snake and the guy would get bored and then he'd look heads up and then the tonic kid would just light his ass up. And then they would go out the very next point and the guy would do the same thing and the tonic kid would do the exact same thing to him. And it's like, man, why can't we like learn? And this happened, I mean, it wasn't just him. I'm telling you, it, there, 146 teams played, f five teams won. I want to say... A thousand people did the wrong wrong thing, <laughs> and or they yeah, or they just didn't speak up. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of. I mean, I don't. How I saw it was the same way you saw it. Like you have to get in there. I literally told said to one team, I forgot who it was. If I was the last guy on the Dorito side, I would run across and jump in the snake yeah. from the Doritos. Yeah. Because you have to win down that snake. You you yeah. Or the guy's gonna shoot you in the back, right? Every time. <laughs> I, mean, I watched that kid major on the academy get legitimately 10 to 15, four or five pieces out of that snake. I know. It was like Minnie Mouse, just all the way down, up, kill, 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 mm -hmm. kill, stand up and be like, that's all five. And you're like, man, they're going to counter it. Nope, they didn't counter it. Just like you're saying, I'd have, I mean, even Rainey said at one point, he's like, I don't care if we have to shoot five guns at that snake guy. We have to get him off the field on the break. Yeah, like prop, props to Rainey, too. Do the job. Big gamble on their uh, overtime point in the finals. He did the double snake play, inside snake and the outside Off snake. Off the break? Off the break, overtime finals. Damn! The, the, the inside guy got shot. I walked off happy. The other guy just went right down to their side. Mm, their they all said, one, they uh, all said, yeah. And that was in D3. They won that, and I think their D4 team got third place yeah. also, mm -hmm. which for Rainey is huge, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and just so everybody's kind of like, kind of clear on it. It was like, this lane was so hard to make it to. And actually, I, I, I don't know who you had playing this can, but they could not hit this guy running up to the corner. I yeah, mean, I you, you said that they were hitting him on the other side. But when I, I was always on the away side, and I kept watching that guy on, on regime or whoever would just go run out there and he would make it into that corner. But then also, like, we, like, I had Angel for us. He was running out there and he was rarely getting hit too. I know. Like, like it was so funny because when I first walked the field with the Narcos guys, I'm like, woof, no one's making it out. I mean, because you guys, just so I'm kind of drawing some lane, some lines here on on, uh, on the map uh, for, for a couple of you guys watching this. I think, you know, and that was Oops. a little bit of a fault of, of mine is I think that the back center guys needed a little bit more explanation and detail, like exactly where to shoot. I don't know if they were shooting on the outside of those big center bunkers or over like cresting over top of theirs. Mm -hmm. um, in in order to get would run that corner and just go right around it straight into the into the wing. I, yeah, I, yeah, but it's it's crazy to me because like as a as a guy that's looking at the snake, right? Because you can you literally take one. It was one big step off the box, and you can see. Yes, you can yeah. see this guy who has to run out somewhere over here, right? So he's running here, or he's or he's running into this uh, this this god this god bunker, right? Well, and from that can that you could shoot on the outside of the corner, so you could prevent that move. But people were still making it. I know it's just it's so, that's why it's so crazy because you can see this guy going, and then if he's standing up right here, you can bring your gun easily over to this thing because again you have one step, and then just you have nothing else to shoot at except for the outside of it. Well, I think a there. lot of divisional players too don't understand the the concept of like. You know, you move a couple steps, then you place, and you get mm -hmm. your shot. And then after they go through that lane, then you sure. finish out your sure. run. So they're just in motion going to that can, and their accuracy is <clears> way down. Uh, but they, I think there's going to be a lot of teams playing that layout this weekend and next weekend 
trying to understand what they did wrong with it because I've had a bunch of teams ask me what I thought. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, I'd be setting like kind of like how you said the two Dorito side guys. I was like, I'd put a guy in that wing and on the outside wherever you want to put two guys and just push my way down the field. Don't care how many times you get shot, just figure out how to put those guys in and get down to the 45-yard line or whatever it was because it seemed a lot of the younger teams played real stale over there Mm -hmm. when you could put a guy in and go. Yeah, and and honestly, that's actually what I told Orlando. Um, uh, Like a couple of things, right? One of the the big things is like we weren't really – we weren't really asking for help. A lot of a yeah. lot of divisional players don't like to ask for help. They're playing, they're playing, and they just don't like what the one guy next to him isn't like, hey, stay alive, and the other guy's over there isn't saying, hey, I need help with this. Um, and that's one of the big things that divisional players really have. And I actually that's a big thing that all players have. And that's the difference between the top ten team or a top five team and then the bottom the rest of the world. Is me to say, like, if I see Danny or Arturo or Chris like overly gun battling, I'd be like, yo, yo, Arturo, chill. Hey, What's stopping you? And he's going to go, oh, the guy in the monster's on me, right? And I'll be like, all right, cool, hold on. And then I'll yell over to Chris on the other side of the field, be like, hey, monster's looking snake side. You guys can make a move now. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of like break it down from that. But a lot of times the guys are watching and you're, you're like, oh, man. Oh, well, my guy's dead. All right, my turn. You know, or, or they won't really get past that thing about saying, hey, how can I help you? So what I did say, uh, Orlando, for the Omega guys, because they're going to practice next weekend at SU, SU, SU Village. I'm like, dude, practice each other and see if they'll set up the same layout and really try to like figure out, oh, I get it now. Like mm. really figure out how to like talk to each other and help each other. But most importantly, make sure that if you're not going to be looking at that snake, you know, <laughs> like tell someone else to look that way yeah. or yell red alert. Um, and, and it's good if, you know, again, share the experience, right? If you're, if you're getting in the snake, no problem. You're going to be like, dude. I'm getting in there, no problem. Uh, this the only guy that can look at me is this guy. The only guy that can stop me is this guy. So make sure we have a guy doing that. Yeah, yeah. Again, share the experience. Agreed. There's a lot because even if the next layout's not this layout, mm-hmm. there's going to be something like that that you see an inside guy holding it down and a guy on the wire. How can sure. you overcome that? Mm-hmm. We're getting a lot of a lot of little thumbs up things. Yeah, it's here. pretty good. A lot of, lot of a... thumbs up. I don't know why it does that. Um, they, awesome. They just like hearing you talk, right? No, 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 no. It's like the do. camera. Have you ever put he, he like a it, thumb up? It did it for up? you too earlier, Mike. You when you did it. Like if you put a camera. thumbs up for some somehow, we don't. We're not exactly sure how it works, but you can like. There's these gesticulations, <laughs> bubbles that pop up, and we're like, I don't know. Up. So it's actually us giving ourselves props, which you know, I do that. In the, I, I try to do that in the mirror only, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, what what happened to the little X's? Oh, yeah, you're gonna bring that back. Them. We have the big and the little X's. Mm-hmm. We just felt like coming off of Vegas that everybody wanted to see this layout, and there's a lot of things we can do with this kit with the snake beams. We don't have to make a double snake on one side, but if the time, I mean, kind of just a feeling, right? Like talking to people. If the time comes, the problem is if we use the the big X, especially, you have to definitely pull probably one or two of the bricks, some of the big bunkers off, because there would just be so many big obstacles in the way you put that x up and it changes the dynamic of the field usually right like Mm -hmm. big time there's a lot of center point with the x and then if you have i mean what are you going to do put 50 bricks next to it it's going to be the trump wall by the time we're done right everybody's going to be running up to the 50 (laughs) playing paintball out of there so uh, we may we may use them we we still have four sets of them the mini x's are a pain because that crease where it comes down in the middle Everybody puts their barrel in there and shoots out, and how Sup Air has the seams, the seams on the inside of the bunker, uh-huh. so your barrel's shooting straight into it. Right. And, like, we ended up, Frankie, that used to do setup, he came up with the idea of using, like, inner tubes that are that size, so it looks like there's black duct, duct tape around the middle, but in all reality, it's an inner tube around the middle, so you don't just blow the seam to pieces. Mm. I want to say day one of the first day using them. Yeah. One of them went flat on us because somebody just sat in that crease dumping hoppers through it. And, and the it inside of it just covered it. Right <laughs> the guy just had his barrel stuck in it and didn't even know what he's shooting at. Blew a hole <laughs> right through it. So we'll see. <laughs> That's a good thing with a blind layout, though, right? We can use different props and not, you know, it's a blind layout. People aren't going to, you never played it. You're not playing this before the event. It's not like a kit that you guys. Next weekend at ASG, you need all the right pieces for. True. So, 
I feel like there's a little fun to that, right? Because you get the brackets, and we all know what it's like, right? Especially in the pro division, you're playing guys you've already played 300 times, and you're focused on the game by having different bunkers out there. Just gives them a different angle, kind of like when we were all kids playing paintball on, like, wooded fields or whatever it was. It was just, we had to learn the field as much as the other team. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> give, me, uh, give me your favorite... Uh, a favorite, maybe not your favorite, a favorite uh, paintball story from back in the heyday. Something fun, fun anecdote. Somebody you shot, bunkered, smashed, binked. <laughs> so we're talking about stuff that we all did on the field, okay? Yeah, whatever you want. Any, uh, any show, any, 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 uh, any show, any, any story that you have. You have, you have any story. Uh, obviously, being on Dynasty, I think it was World Cup. We were playing NYX. We had an overtime point. But back when we had 80 million, I think Kill Jack, everybody was that mm -mm. era. And my number got called to go out for the overtime point. I was kind of like, oh, shit, they want me to go out there? All right. Oh, There's a lot right. of better dudes on this team you could put out there. But I think that was back when the X was in play at the PSP. And uh -huh. I remember some of the shots we had walking the field because obviously we would walk the field until security physically threw us out of there. <laughs> it was a shot over the X into the far corner that – Back then, the stands were actually full of people, mm. like really full. And I had slid into the snake, which I was not too comfortable in, and <laughs> shot somebody across the old. But back then, when there's a couple thousand people screaming, you're like, yep, definitely shot that guy. Yeah. And uh, I think I walked up and executed the last guy in the snake, and we happened to win the point, so that was pretty cool. But oh, yeah. a lot of those moments, you know what I mean? Like, we had a lot of really cool moments back then, right? Mm -hmm. Even like being at World Cup. That first year, the Russians showed up, and they beat us in Nemecol, and then we came back to beat them at World Cup. I remember our pit, like the nets around our pits were about to collapse. Oh, yeah. People that was rad. On it, you know what I mean? When Johnny had to stuff, stuff his jersey in the pod and threw it over the net. I think yeah. that was that. That was mm -hmm. cool. Remember when you ran? So, I remember when you saved a point for us, but you you had to run it in, but your pants fell down. <laughs> that was because we were playing against excessive, and somebody had called a count that we were like, kill four, and the fifth one was wherever, and I was like, all right, I'm going around the X. And I swear it was like Rich or somebody came wheeling out of the back center and I had to, my fat ass tried to matrix it and my pants popped open. I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> Try out on Dynasty. I flew from Shock I was gonna to bring this up Bob's too. house. Like on Saturday night. With Mini Mike. On, on Saturday night, right? On Saturday night. Yeah. And then Angel and I had never spoken to each other, right? And to this day, when I see Angel, I always give him a big handshake and a hug. We're truly friends. Angel's a really good human being. Simple dude, but just very good dude. <laughs> and uh, it, Indian John is taking the pant orders, and I think I'm a 34 at the time or whatever. And Angel out of the blue goes, ah, why don't you get a pair of 36s? And I'm like, ah, oh, do they run small? And Angel comes back and he goes, no, so when you grow some balls, you can fit in them. And I'm like, all right, it's going to be like that. <laughs> And with my reputation that preceded me, for Angel to say that, I was like, yep. All right. All that's, right. That's really who I Punch the biggest dude drove, in the face. Check. <laughs> and, then, and then we just drove from Oakland all the way down. That was the same practice that I think Arnold Francisco jumped out of the snake with everybody shooting fully automatic guns and yelled, like, Scarface, Scarface motherfuckers. Scarface, like motherfuckers. on one and just got eviscerated <laughs> with yeah. banana Scarface, ball. motherfuckers. We're like, whoa, dude, just, chill. Yeah, uh, I still yeah, see but, Arnold playing, and he's still getting chewed up on those runs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He still sends exactly it, though. Bob's yeah, he sends didn't it. didn't have any cheater software, and they were shooting left-handed with one finger yeah. at, like, 30 balls 30 a balls second. 30 balls a second. Oof. Yeah, that was funny. Simple dude. And Bob, <laughs> and, Bob would be, and Bob would be sitting there like, I swear there's nothing in my game. Yeah, no, no, it's just, uh, it's, just, it's just normal. This is how they come out. Of the, like, I don't do anything Five different. gigantic steps back, like, Lord, if you're going to start throwing those lightning bolts, just don't hit me with one of them. <laughs> Um, do you, so hold on. Do you still talk to Angel? Do you have any contact? A couple of years ago, he showed up at an event. No, get out of here. Really? One hundred percent. Yeah. Man. If anybody knows how to get a hold of Angel, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a plaque and a jacket for him because he made it into the Hall of Icons, and I would like to give it to him. I don't know how to find him. So this well, is me sending it. There in I, I know he's he's in the he's in the ether, listening or seeing or feeling. Just want him to. Send me a send me a post office box or delivery area. <laughs> it, was some, it was some divisional team we had at WC that was, mentioned Angel, and I was. They said he had been coming out or come out a couple times, and like hung out with them or whatever. Just go over there and just handle all five guys. 
and then be like, all right, I'm done. I'll see you guys in a decade, losers. <laughs> up, up 19 to 1. Can I go to the Doritos? Yeah, Absolutely nope. not. No Back way, to the dude. snake angel. <laughs> you know, it was true, too. That dude was not allowed to do anything no. but no. corner, God, snake. snake. That's it. Sorry, dude. Burn them knees. Like just you stay in you stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Don't, don't that was take. his job, and I think in about three seconds mine was Ryan saying, shoot left, shoot left, shoot left. Alright, cool. <laughs> Kentucky left it is. Kentucky left it is. Yeah. That's that's fun. That's <laughs> Angel, man. What a guy. I like that. He's a simple dude. <laughs> yeah. Not in a bad way. Just, no, 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 no. He is. He's just like you're right. There was just... no like, you know, two face about it. You knew no. exactly where if he talked to you, you knew Angel liked you. And if he didn't talk to you, it just Big Daddy Ainge was doing what Big Daddy Ainge does. Dude, we'd have we'd have our we'd be we'd have our, our team meetings and we'd be like, all right, everybody, like we're just like on the field, walking the field, and he's got his little he had his like portable DVD player with his headphones on, just sitting by the bleachers, just watching a DVD on the like, It'd be the equivalent of someone bringing an iPad to the field, and while you're like about like talking over the final intricacies of the field, that fool's just watching. Just watching, iPad. you know, like dodgeball or something, you know, like top gun. Because all he had to walk was three bunkers, snake one, yeah, dodge, yeah, he's like, corner. Yeah, what are we doing out here for so long, guys? Yeah, like, yeah. all I need to do is these three spots, yeah. go to their side, shoot everybody. Yeah, yeah. I, I need him. I need to get a recording of him, just like, just so I can play on my phone and be like, this is how you win from the snake. Yeah, get in the snake, check off the tape, crawl down, shoot everybody in the back. That's how you win. Tr- tr- trust me, I've been saying it. Um, but no, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of cool growth that, uh, you know, we talked about, um, coaching and mouse was actually really, uh, you know, passionate about some of that stuff about what he, what he was saying about, you know, helping guys and stuff like that. And, um, it really is cool to see players blossom and bloom and like right when it clicks and then be like, dude, that's it. And then them having a, a, like a terrific match or game and like each guy, on both uh, the Omega teams and, and, and the Narcos guys, like things began to click with everybody. And it's like such a cool thing to see. And even if like a random, like a silly bananas guy comes up and he's just like, Hey, how can I play this a little bit better? And I'm like, yo, do you know, this is, this is how I play your spot a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, like keep an eye on here. If this happens, do that. Um, it's such a cool thing to see people's like eyes light up. And, and then when it does click and it's just like the elation that they have of like, wow, that was kind of like a big moment while playing. It's like, cool. You know, um, the, and, those are the moments we all live for in paintball, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. To be in that position, and then for us as coaches, even like Harrison was out there, right? Mm-hmm. Coaching yeah. a three-man team, which I believe is Steve Kwan's dead shot guys or something like that. There was D six three-man, and you know Harrison's always super happy about everything as is. But he had come down talking about like getting these beginner D six three-man teams to see and understand <laughs> what he's saying and. It's just the next step in it, right? For everybody that plays the game and loves the game, mm-hmm. to then be able to coach somebody and give your knowledge and your insight on the field and have it actually produce and yeah. win, right? Yeah, and it's must have been such a cool thing. I mean, that obviously, like you went through so many different players and like a lot of them, like just tons of hardship. But like, man, just a even the gratitude now of like them seeing it or just knowing in the back of their head that like, dude, like I owe a lot to Mike for what he did for me, you know, and even like him being hard on me was like a good thing, Mm -hmm. you know, snapping guys back into it. I mean, Kyle's been like, dude, I I think it's such a Kyle story, such a cool story, right? Because not a lot of people, I'll use Angel's term, have the balls to do what Kyle did, which is up and leave, you know, drive his, his hoopty out here and be like, I have nothing. Like I need someone to say, right. And you took him in. Right. And, and like for the last 15 how long has it been when did you move in with with him 13, 14 years yeah now? and like yeah. And, it, and it was it was a long road but like you looked for it right mike you said it earlier it was like i'm looking for guys that have grit that won't quit when it gets hard won't give up because i pushed back on them a little bit because dude at the end of the day losing sucks and, and a lot of people when they lose they want to quit but with you you know like making sure that these guys can handle all the aspects of that super important. That's why I think like as from a coaching standpoint, from like a, from a mentorship standpoint, like it, you know, obviously if you, it's like, it's like, dude, you're, you're, you create the Navy SEALs, you know, like you're, you are the fucking, the, the master commander that's sending dudes through buds and the guys that were able to, to like push through the pain and the, the fucking, 
sometimes the ridicule and then the, the like that, the, the good job yeah. it makes you you cut your teeth and it makes you a sharp player because like you mentioned it was like dude the some of the like the top some of the top like 10 guys in the world playing paintball right now came from your system and it's harsh yeah. and it sucks but it's not for everybody but if it's not for you you're not going to probably be a top 10 guy you might not be a top 10 guy you may not be a pro guy there's not many guys mm. that washed out that right. really became pro guys and that's mm. not i mean from my point of view i always want to see people succeed even if we see differently mm -hmm. you, i don't do addition by subtraction right like we don't got to knock people down but absolutely it's really cool seeing i mean even mouse like kyle was listening in on it and i love mouse right like but even to this day there's still like this like needing to prove it to me and it's like <laughs> i tell mouse all the time i'm like dude you were better than me, like, day two of your paintball career than I ever was. So, like, you've already far exceeded me. But, I mean, all you guys know, you know, Ryan, like, you guys win tournaments. I'll send you a text message. Kyle, mm -hmm. good job, man. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. a two-way street. I always want to see everybody do good. Yeah. You know, like, for sure. especially the guys that I had input in their careers at some point. But all these guys, Kyle included, right, like, they walked through the door themselves. I showed them the door. But it was 100% on them to go through the door. So right. it's cool, man. It's it's weird, right? Again, back when Kyle got in his car to drive out here, when you were coming up on the Iron Kids, whoever thought we would be where we are today. For real. Like there's no, if you really could go back 20 years and tell yourself this is what it's going to be, it's just no way. Like none of us, you'd be like, you're out of your skull. Yeah. But here we are 20 years, 30 years later or whatever, still doing this. And... It's just secondhand nature, and I'm pretty sure we're all going to be doing it until there's no air left in our lungs, right? We're lifers, and as we all get older, <laughs> just making the best of it. Like, Piers Ryan, you're never going to quit, so that's cool. Because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. You know, this is all hope to be like, man, we could have, but Ryan's still doing it. <laughs> yeah, Marcelo gives me shit about that <laughs> for, for the last several years. He's like, dude. When are you going to quit already? I, I, I don't know if my, my body's going to allow me to get, go as long as you. <laughs> Dude, him, Joe, like this, I, when uh, Mikey was talking to me before he quit last year, and it was like, we're at, it was after World Cup, and we went out, and he told me, and I, I had to hold it and not tell Ryan. And he's not good with secrets. I'm not good with secrets, so I'll just tell everyone. So, like, I'm like, Ryan, and I just didn't tell Ryan, but Mikey's like, hey, um, <laughs> he asked me, he's like, do you, um, when do you think, do you think those, like, those guys are going to quit, like, one year, two years, three years. I'm like, Mikey, I have no idea. I thought they were going to quit in three years, like 10 years ago. So I, they could play for another 20. Yeah, who knows? I, I don't think Ryan's quitting anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. He's so... I think eggs will step back when there's plenty of guys, but two or three guys don't show up. Way he's heading to the snake. I mean, eggs so Dude, starting. Like, he's, just start, the... he's like, he didn't show up the first week of practice. He missed like a day of practice. Uh, for the layout weekend, he's like, I'll play a couple points over there just in case Chris can't make it. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, you're the starter. <laughs> someone, someone said something funny the other day, too. It was like the styles changed, like the style of like play and everything from like 2009 and 2008. It's like he's still playing that style, but he's still good. You know, like just doing funny things like yeah. serving tea and like just running off Double knees. Yeah. <laughs> Which seems to work for him. Every yeah. time Wiggy says... A good point. I'm just fist pumping it down, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he won a golden barrel, but la last year or two years ago, yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah, dude, he still so. somehow got it. I think that was the one where he would just shoot the landing pad cross field. Some idiot would run right into it, and then Eggs would get right up and go bunker a guy or two in front of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be a two or three piece, and you guys would clean house. It's a yeah. guarantee you're getting bunkered. I say that to every single team that I'm coaching too. I'm like, if you're in the snake with Alex, you're getting bunkered. Yeah, like you're like it's coming, you know. Do you want to be? You want to get bunker? Do you want to be the guy that bunkers guys? Yeah, better bring it. Better bring it. Better bring it. All right, right on, Mike, dude. This is uh, this is great. I I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, um, thank you. Appreciate being here, man. This it, it you officially made it. Um, you know you're officially. Yep, there it is. I know. You've I been think Mike. We had Mike on one time. No, nope. like a year ago. No, I think we asked. We asked him, but he 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 always had like other things going on. Stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he always had bigger Stop. things going on. My throat hurts. Things like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, last week I'm still sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody gets sick at paintball tournaments. Yeah, yeah, like we're, we're, we're paintball people are go get sick. filthy human beings, dude. I've been pretty resilient. I've gotten through. I saw a lot of I saw a lot of porta potties. I didn't see a lot of places to wash your hands. Hmm. Let's go ahead and think about that. Whenever I'm trying to give you fist bumps. 
and you can with some people do this and they're like and they go like they no some people like they go in there and they weasel their <laughs> hand in there and you're like dude what just happened how did you right. open my hand Next how did you just open my hand sanitizer everywhere for you I, I i i usually have it you know like you got I'll have a little 10 by 10 wc tent and the front of it will be open and be like if you want to shake ryan's hand first sterilize mask but put it yeah. up high too for mm-hmm. ryan so he's got to jump up there Squeeze it out. Right. I'm, I'm there with you. I'm there with you. I'm there with you, I'm there with you too. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. But I'm not and Ryan complaining about it. <laughs> I put it up six feet. Kyle's never getting to that thing. <laughs> Stand on my shoulders. <laughs> hey, Mouse. Can you help me over here? Go get can that, you, please. Can you get the cookies from the top shelf? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dad hit him up there. <laughs> Pop a hand and hit it up there. Oh man, short king. That's right. That's right. I think Ryan actually means little king or something like that. <laughs> Shit. Shit. <laughs> All right. Um, well, dude, get some um, rest. Get some. Get Definitely. some rest if you can. Until the next time. Thank you guys. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. being on. Thank you, dude. Anytime you want, we'll. Uh, you're 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 in here, dude. I'm in there, boys. There I'm in go. there, boys. We there made it. We're big leagues, baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, later, brothers. Later. Thanks, dude. Right on. Oh, let me get that get camera phone number. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Get get everybody's phone number out of there. All right, dude. That epic. was epic, dude. That was so good. I was gonna ask him the the names of the teams, but but the I team felt names? like yeah, the team names. The team. I wrote down a couple of team good names. Or, good or bad? Yeah, yeah. To give, but we need like we need a full on. We can get like a almost like a whiteboard, or maybe we just draw on that door. Like who cares? Oh yeah. You know, and just be like, we'll just like draw fill the door up with names because like yeah. i was gonna be like all right we got we got the mighty dolphins you know we could just let we'll ask you guys while i'm spinning the wheel we gotta be careful though because given the props went a little they ran with they it. ran with it dude yeah. those guys are, those guys those guys are the guys that like um they do a, like a interview on the news and then they're like like it goes viral and they're yeah. like we're famous yeah yeah um <laughs> So what we'll in do? trouble for not wearing the shirt. I know, yeah, dude, they're busting our balls. What I about my brand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, am I allowed to wear my shirt? Sheesh, sheesh, guys, sheesh. Um, you on the lookout too. All this uh, new stuff. I'm gonna drop it probably within the within the week. Yeah, get it up on the site. Get it, so. We'll get it. Up, we'll get you Thanks, set, Get the link. We'll put it up into the, the community section. Yeah, so you I'll guys have first, get... first, first rip at it. If you guys oh, are a show uh, supporter, um, uh, discount of merch perk and above, and then we'll and then we'll open it up to everybody. We. They'll open it up to everybody uh, as it as it goes. So um, we got some good prizes to go give away. We got a couple of uh, little merch items, um, some nectar pucks to give out to the to the masses. Shout out to these boys here. They were on last week. Uh, little energy pouches, uh, and then um, yeah, we got some Gen X pod caddies. I got some pod caddies, some water bottles. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin the wheel a couple of times. While we're doing that, Kyle, you'll have to you'll have to monitor it because I can't really see the. Mm-hmm. things here um actually you know what? i could probably just do this and do this here so uh let's go to the let's go to the mega wheel here let's go to the mega support status wheel let me kind of go ahead and then i'm going to name off a couple of uh a couple of team names and then i'm going to want you guys to uh let me know how you feel about them you guys think it's a yay or a nay and uh we'll just see you know you never know you never know if it's a good name. It could be a good name. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. It's up to you guys. We're not saying it is. We're not saying it isn't. We're just we're just saying it. Uh, all right. So let's see. We got right here Mighty Dolphins. What do you guys think? Yeah? No? Are we feeling it? Yay, nay. You know? We kind of liked it. The Baton Rouge Mighty Dolphins. It was it was fun until they, you know, they kind of... I don't want to say they it. They're, they're right there on the end. They, Pushing it. Pushing team Beefy Boys. Uh, You know... I don't love it. I don't love it. Yeah, there was another one. Uh, where is this? Uh, okay, here's a good one. And these guys are growing on me also. Uh, congratulations to Dalton Gilbert, by the way. The gym bros. So when I think about it, like, all right, just to kind of like, here's my criteria, whether you care or not to hear my criteria. Like you come up with a team name that uh, that either is affiliated with a sponsor. So I, I could see like the LVPP team because they're probably there in the Yetis. Um... Uh, but we were Cap Factory for a while, so if you're a factory team, cool. You're supporting support the sponsors. But generally, you want to do a team name that has something to do with that you could like possibly market. You know? Like, mm-hmm. what if you make it big? What if you are the the dopest you're team? The next dynasty. You're a dynasty, right? That was a bold bold play. Bold play. Um, 
So, yeah, that's kind of like where I'm looking at. So, like, the long shots. Kind of it's growing on me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like them. Yeah. It can happen. And we're the long shots. I got a long shots jersey, too. Team Dynasty. That's obviously one. Narcos. Um, not horrible. Not horrible, but, this is not it. you know, not... What's a uh, narco? What's a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're not... Um, Oops, let me see here. Uh, you're not getting any corporate sponsorship, I guess I would say. That's what that's where I would that's where I would go with that one. Narcos aren't getting any corporate sponsorship. Mm. It's fitting for paintball, but uh, the TJ Bastards. What do you guys think? Uh, I believe, and the goal is uh, is to get um, a pro spot eventually. Yeah. I you try to sneak in a tiger something in there maybe? tiger bastards yeah i don't know about that tj tigers tj tigers that's dope that flows that is sick tj tigers is tight oh yeah that was for your audio audio audio, audio auditory uh I'm gonna enlightenment dude the tj tigers. tigers i'm putting that in right there what do you guys name michael montanari which one are we doing here it's like tj tigers username. Yeah, picking a username, that's pretty funny. Yeah, like... Um, Mine was Lil Spicka. Lil Spicka69 <laughs> at, at AOL.com, dude. It was actually at AOL. That was my <laughs> AIM name, AIM. Messenger. Lip Spicka. Uh, Lil Spicka. <laughs> Lip Spicka. <laughs> Lip Spick. <laughs> um, okay, how about Sacramento Pink? Hmm. Mm. They did just win. I don't love the name. But I'm not a huge fan. Maybe Sacramento... I like Verbal. Verbal's a good one. You can't Seaside. be called bastards when you're trying to get the sport. Seaside, Verbal, Sacramento. Yeah, exactly, Mike. I got, I got you there. Sacramento Serpents. I need, like, double. Ooh, the Sac Serpents. Like Spick and Span. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that. Sacram- the Sac Spick and Spanners. Yeah, that's a good one. Lincoln Place. Sacramento Purple. Mentos. You get like a sponsorship by... Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, Anxiety. <laughs> Team Anxiety. I saw that, too. I was like... I was like it's not, funny, I actually, you know, when you have those moments when no one's around and you're thinking about something that you're like, I'm not going to tell anyone about this. I was, the, there was a kid actually, props to this kid too, he was selling headbands next to our booth. Did you, did oh you yeah, him? yeah, I talked to him. He's he's 16 years old and I was like, we stayed there because we set up booth plates. Did, so mouse, did mouse get up on him? No, no. I, <laughs> Yo, just, I like your headband, kid. Where'd you get that? We set up kind of late. Oh, cause, dude, look, it's still alive. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Don't, don't zap any cords over there. <laughs> it's dead put that thing on the skillet um we set up a little late um standard yeah standard but you, know, you like to make people build yeah. anticipation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but we were there uh sunday late and he was packing up and i was like man that he was doing it all by himself i was like this kid's gotta be young mouse house and he's 16 years old dude like, good for him up. yeah i, I talked doing to him. all by himself he said he he said he actually uh, he does like sublimated headbands, right? Yeah, yeah, good for him, man. He not look quite as good as Tiger Wear, but you know, no, props no, on him. He's sixteen. He's got a lot more years. So. A lot of stuff going yeah. on. Yeah, in yeah. in we'll see what in, in, in several years he'll be he'll be yeah. he'll be on it, dude. Stay stay with it, and I I like I like that though, and, and this is actually also again why I'm gonna I'm gonna say I really liked last week's show because it was such a cool thing that like the twins did to to like just start a new brand from literally from scratch like start a product that is non-existent yeah um you know obviously headbands are a thing but you got to get an entrepreneurial spirit there get something started soon you know yeah. when you do it and you're 16 they need to old. get a team like, yeah Nan- nantucket nectars or dude something. the Nant- nantasket nectars yeah. yeah dude i like it i like it um team tonic we asked i, I, feel thought, like it's I missing, thought it was toxic i feel like it's missing something like it needs it needs something in front of it or bef- after it. But what I was saying is that kid was wearing an uh, anxiety jersey, and I was looking at him, and I was like, I can't decide if that's a good name or not. So that would be, it would be like a, I could see like a high-end fashion brand being called anxiety. Mm. Right? Like, because I could see people being like into that. You know, it's like the anti-social club. Yeah. The anti-social social club. It's like one of those kind of play on something. Like everybody, everybody these days has anxiety of some sort, and it's just like, you, I could see someone like repping it like anxiety, you know, yeah. like, oh shit. Wearing that oh, Rod said Entourage. Entourage was a great name. I thought Entourage was a great name, except it's not when you're the guys that are playing on the Entourage team. Because we use it Dynasty Entourage, because Entourage is like the crew that hangs around like the popular people or like the famous people. Yeah. So when we had Entourage as our second team, I thought it was really cool. 
It's like you, Donnie. But then when you're the guys that are like, dude, I'm I'm your fucking entourage. Those are like big. Like there was a drama too. Mm-hmm. Drama was when I was coming up in paintball. Like aftermath, gridlock, mm-hmm. entourage, drama. Mm-hmm. Um, entourage is good as long as it's not the sem- the the second pro team, right? Yeah. So we started it as the like we have the elite like the dynasty pro team. And then we have Entourage, which was our other pro team, our second pro team. Yeah. So that's when it got like, you know, it wasn't, it was we didn't think about once. it. We didn't think, you played for the pro team or you played for I the played for the pro team? No. Yeah. Really? Yeah, with Bear and Dalton. No, the, Bear was never on Dynasty Entourage. Yes, he was. He That wasn't the pro team. That was the semi-pro team that Rodney was running. We played pro. Where? It was a... Uh, what? It was a year that, um, it was 2010. I got on Ironman... But mm-hmm. they, they were, uh, I didn't get play time, so I was like, can I play on another team? Mm-hmm. And I got an entourage, and they said, if you play us, Ironman, you just can't play at all. Yeah, no way. I, yeah, it was 2010. I think it was the second event. I'm pretty sure Bear never played on a, the Dynasty Pro uh, team. We got to look this up. We got to look this up. Um, here's a good one. Los Frijoles, Colorados. <laughs> Los Frijoles, Colorados. Is it Colorado? No, Colorados. There's Colorado. I think it's like the the Colorado beans. Look, dope. I <laughs> love it. Entourage. Two thousand. Did you found it that quickly? Yeah, because I went to my pro race to seven. Yeah. Two thousand. What event was it? No, dude. I think you guys played semi pro. Nope. Um. Oh, sh- maybe it is Entourage. Pro Race to Seven. I'm pretty sure it was this. Yeah, event. maybe that's it's weird. Chicago. There's Pro Race to Seven. Colette Bear. What? Yeah, I knew it. God, I no way. Memory. Ryan Colette. Pro. Jameson, Race Ronnie. To... Mark Lack. Dalton. Wait, were we playing Pro in that event also? I think so. Dude, I yeah, don't remember that at all. Um, and well, yes, yeah, Orlando, 20. you don't need to say whether or not Orla- uh, Omega is a good name. Omega's a dope team name. We did really, really like good that. too. Uh, oh and four, lost to Vicious, Red Legion, Aftershock. No shit. Close, How did I not even know that? games though. How did I not even know that? And I think Lords Lords is good. I think Vegas Vendetta is good. Red Beans. Huh. Vegas Vendetta is tight. I like that name. It 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 it's catchy. You guys don't need our approval, do you? Yeah, you do. We're putting them up on the board. We're getting a board made. All right, guys. Uh, this was an awesome show. This was this was probably uh, probably one of my, one of my favorite ones we've done. Certainly, maybe the favorite one of my favorites this year for sure. Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Mike. Big shout out to Mike. This WCPPL. Dude, that's cool, dude. For what he's doing too. I talked to him a little bit more in depth about his mm-hmm. his drives and packing up the things and <clears throat> like just days on the road and mm-hmm. all the like sweat and work that goes into his like doing a good thing. Yeah, he really he really is, um, and it's it's great for paintball. Uh, really cool to hear that that's the second largest league by 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 far. Yeah, um, I have a lot. Even though these, in, they're even a lot of work for us. Like harder than probably any. Oh yeah, this is work, much. Like, this is much more difficult and stressful on me than than the real, whole entire Vegas, Vegas event. Where yeah, we won. Uh, but still, um, like a lot of fun. Like we're really involved in like all, all the, you know, not just our teams that we're helping, but like talking to other teams or just like in the getting to be in the divisional sides, which we are not mm-hmm. really ever part of in mm-hmm. at the pro tournaments. It's, it's nice to be like, you know, with all those guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's so. actually, that's a, that's a, um, great, great point too. Yeah. It's, it's really nice to be able to, so thank you, uh, Orlando and Omega and committed paintball and, the, and Richie from Narcos and Oz. Thanks to Ben and, uh, and dirty day for joining the guys. Uh, Hector dude is, it's really cool to see what Hector's doing to support, uh, those guys around and you guys to like make sure that the teams are coached. Yeah. Um, he seems to have a good time with it. Um, it's it's really cool. Uh, I, I also like and we've mentioned it with Mouse. I think it's really good that Mouse is out there now, like yeah, in facing the people and getting getting in, involved in all that stuff. And he said some really good, really mm-hmm. really high level stuff too this weekend. Where I was like looked up, and I was like, yeah, that's let's we're doing that. Like, yeah, this is a good good plan. So for sure. Um, and it, it's great. And like I said, it, it's really good to see a lot of those aftermath kids uh, coaching. I think it's probably better for them until they rank up. So hopefully aftermath doesn't do well in the next event. Just so you guys, I think you guys should be playing in the events. Hmm. I think it's way better experience than it is coaching the events. So like Ethan and Brando, um, you get way more out of it than like 
playing the events than coaching. Um, but big shout out to uh, Paul from Matrix here. I don't Tiger would be in yeah. shambles at the events because uh, he helps me out too a lot. So yeah, Paul's amazing. Big thanks to everybody and Chef Mike out there. I saw you out there playing, beat yeah. Randy's team. He's always like, "What's up, neighbor?" Oh, it's you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys live next door to each other now. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, man. Well, this is an awesome show. If you guys are listening to this on uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you guys get your podcasts, well, those are the only two places you can. Uh, make sure you guys give us a like there. Um, do we do the show next week on Wednesday if they don't give us a? Let's talk about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get on um, Jason again. He says he doesn't really finalize everything until till Tuesday evening, but at 7:30 East Coast time, he should have the field finalized. So we'll do a petition to. See if we can get it released. But maybe we'll just do it on Wednesday. I think I have an Intel, Dynasty Intel session on Wednesday night, actually. Mm. Mm. We're going to talk about it. We're going to try to work something out. Uh, speaking of which, Dynasty Champs Club uh, memberships are closed uh, for this quarter. We're going to be giving out... Someone's going to be coming to practice with us. We're going to be giving one of those prizes away. Also, on DynastyPaintball.com, we've got uh, all access passes. So if you're planning on going to Texas and you want to get in on the Dynasty excitement, be in that tent, get free snacks, free water... Spring water. Uh, make sure you guys check out DynastyPaintball.com. Join the All Access Club. We'll be having an Intel session next week, talking about the layout, breaking it down, talking about things, and giving away a ton of cool prizes. So if you're an All Access or Champs Club member, you get access to that. That's what I call All Access. You get it? Mm-hmm. 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 All right, everybody. Let's uh, roll credits. Let me see. Wow. No. Do you want to show anybody your go here? Okay, you gotta say spin, spin, show first. No. Come on, say three, two, one, go. No. Three, two, one, go. No. Here you go. Spin, show spin. It. Look. Gummy bear. Do you think anybody's still watching? Look, there you are. You gotta say something. Can you say anything? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>